Yo, 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 what it is, what it be, what it do. Your friendly neighborhood amazing atheist here, also known as TJ the Great, also known as Bruce Valanche, also known as that fat, useless piece of degenerate shit. And uh, as you guys might remember, uh, celebrating our one-year anniversary this January, we told you guys we're going to release three previously patrons-only episodes to you guys, the normies, in an attempt to get you to do the right thing, to become a patron. Because there's nothing more important in life than becoming a DFF patron. It's just the right thing to do. If you're not, if you haven't done it, you're just a piece of shit. I'm just going to put it out there. You know, I mean, hey, look, if you want to go through life being a piece of shit like me, that's fine. You could do that. You know, it's all right. But if you want fulfillment, if you want to feel spiritually, emotionally, intellectually fulfilled as a human being, you need to become a DFF patron by be joining the Pessimist Productions Patreon. And remember, you're not just pa- you're not just a patron of this channel when you do that. You're a patron of Cinema for Cynics, which, believe it or not, we do have new content coming to Cinema for Cynics. You're also a patron of... My channel, The Amazing Atheist. So that's three channels you're supporting, plus the Hideology channel, plus the TJ Does Life channel, a bunch of stuff. You're helping out a lot of creative endeavors from three fat neck beards who don't have the good sense to realize that they're just not good enough to achieve their dreams. But we're going to keep foolhardily chasing those dreams with your help. And remember, the more patrons we have, the bigger this motherfucker can get. Like, imagine us three retarded neckbeards with a budget, you know? Don't you think that would be tremendous? Don't you think that's worth $5 a month? It's right down below. Anyway, today we are presenting you with yet another uh, episode that used to be patrons only, but now it's free. Now it's free for you. And we hope you enjoy it. Check it out. Here it is. And as you're watching it, please consider becoming a patron. Thank you. Down in Chinatown. Uh, that's really racist, man. Dude, Offensive. What? Yeah, why people something got to be going Chinese down in Chinatown? Ching, chang, chong, ping, Whoa. ping, pong. Oh, we're banned. We're banned. Thanks, TJ. You want shrimp fry, right? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> oh, you want shrimp fry, right? Your casual racism. You want all that shrimp fry, right, with that? TJ, why do you just, why do you think racism is funny, dude? Racism doesn't pay. I don't think racism is funny. TJ's constant casual racism. I am trying to draw attention to the issue of racism in America. TJ, you're not being a good ally, dude. Got it. The Chinese have been discriminated against for too long, dude. And so what did you doing that racist impersonation of a Chinese man do to further the cause? It gave both of you the opportunity to stand up to me and show people that kind of courage. I see... (laughs) That's that's a smart angle. So wow, you're, you're only racist to give if people you had something not, to argue if against. If you had failed to admonish me, then 
I had to flip the script <laughs> on you. Like, wow, I can't believe you guys are just going to sit there and let me insult. Oh shit, dude! The heritage of the great chink people. Whoa. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you, you and I say nothing. Proving, the fuck is wrong proving with you? that they're racist. We're in shock, TJ. Shocked. I, and I feel pretty shocked right now. You know why I don't feel? Uh, you know I don't feel the least bit weird making fun of Asian people because they don't fucking give a shit. They don't. Not like you know some races. I mean, I'm sure they give a shit names. on some lo- level. Like I'm sure if they walked in to like get some groceries and somebody was like ching chong ping pong, oh! you know, if they were yeah. doing that shit. But they for the most care. part, they but don't just give a like shit. offhanded comments. There's and certain shit. people that just don't give a shit if you make fun of them. Amish people because they never see it. Yeah, they don't give. Uh, and even if they did, they dude, I've literally care, just man. been on here and called for like the death of Eskimos, and no one gives a shit because there's only like twelve Eskimos. So yeah, none of them are outraged by anything, and they're just happy to be mentioned. They're, yeah. like, they're just like the cool. white man mentioned us again. Yeah, so you know whatever. But uh, today's episode is not about Asian people, is it? It's actually about in in a way it is. Yeah, is it? Well, Doctor Doctor Mehmet Oz, I'm I'm assuming. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Is broadly Asian, right? Because India is yeah. part of Asia. Well, part of the show we're talking about snake oil, and that and actually, is that also Asian? It came from China originally. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh, TJ. Oh, <laughs> oh TJ, you racist. <laughs> oh, you get you buy snake oil, cure all <laughs> ails you, yeah. Ancient wow. Chinese herbal medicine, TJ. TJ is the least racist person after Trump. See? After That's Trump. That's impressive, yeah. dude. Trump, number one, not racist. Me, number, number two, two, not racist. I'm, I'm willing to take a number two slot to our great president. Okay. Fair enough. <clears throat> Whatever you say, TJ. Whatever I say. I agree. Whatever I say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Fair, That's fair That's easy enough. way to get TJ to agree with you. Whatever you say, TJ. Yeah, I mean, you make a valid point. <laughs> That's a good point there, guys. You talking about snake oil, TJ? Do you know what snake oil is? Uh, I don't, but you're going to educate me, right? No, actually, uh, I thought you knew. Oh, I don't. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, it's going to be a strange. Yeah, show. it's going to be a strange fucking show. I don't know what snake oil is. I, I mean, I assume it's oil from a snake. It's oil from the fucking snake. Yeah. So why don't you bring up a picture of a snake oil salesman? TV? All right, I will. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's take a look at what one of these hucksters looks here we like. Here go. I love this guy here because. He looks so fucking gosh darn trustworthy. Even I want to buy that. Dude, fucking you want to buy oil? That. That's how he sells it to you. I know. He's just got that soft, trustable face. He looks like he knows what he's talking about, and he's pointing to the bottle of snake oil. Like, yep, this yep. is but the you know shit. What it's, you dude, know what it is? I'm telling you. He's so confident. He's not even looking at the bottle. It's like, look, the bottle sells itself. I'm looking at you. You want to fucking fix that toothache? <laughs> I love it, dude. Yep. Dude, so, when I was looking for pictures of snake oil salesmen, by the way, not to bring Trump back into it, but there's got to be like a thousand oh, a pictures that people have like photoshopped Trump into this picture and other pictures. Bunch of pictures of Trump holding the snake oil, pointing <laughs> to the snake oil, smiling. This is the best snake I'll oil. I'll try to pull one. Me. Everybody back. hates a snake oil salesman, you know, but they, they, they serve a vital function. They teach stupid people to hold on to their money. You know, so they don't get duped for all so their money down the road. Here's the definition. Snake oil is an expression that originally referred to fraudulent health products or unproven medicine, that, but has come to refer to any product with questionable or unverifiable quality or benefit. <laughs> By extension, a snake oil salesman is someone who knowingly sells fraudulent goods or who himself, himself or herself, a fraud, quack, charlatan, and the like. So Trump, yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Wow. <clears throat> but no, I mean, like, on it, I saw this uh, thing. Uh, it was a comment on our live show. People were like, great live show, but, you know, them Trump jokes are lazy writing. Lazy, lazy. writing? Yeah. First of all, we didn't write shit. We're too lazy to even write it down. <laughs> we were, we did, you know, we tried to prepare, but we didn't go to the level of, like, let's write. Yeah, no. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, uh, Trump deserves to be made fun of. There's a reason why there's constantly. 50 pictures of him as a snake oil salesman. Any powerful public figure deserves to be made That's fun true. of constantly. Constantly. <laughs> but Trump especially so, because just look at him. Yeah, I mean. So, TJ, probably, probably, this is probably unbeknownst to you. During the mid to late 1800s, there was a sudden influx of Chinese wor- workers, and they, they estimate about 180,000 pe- uh, uh, Chinese people moved to work on the railroads. I've been working on railroads they're basically, all live long day. Basically they, they were building the Transcontinental Railroad. Uh, they're basically endangered servants. They got paid, like, they made more than they would have made in China, so it was a benefit to them, but they're basically just, like, modern-day slaves. 
Yeah, dude. I you know agree. what I mean? Like most anyone today would consider bring if you brought people over like that, it would be considered slavery. Yeah. You live in a camp and you fucking have to do hard labor for like five years. Human trafficking. Look, there is a people when they people think of the old world and slavery, they always think it's all about, you know, uh, just the black slaves who were outright slaves. But really, like there was several ways that you could have soft slavery too, like indentured servitude, like hey, come work for me for seven years and then you're free. Yeah. But usually they would just work those motherfuckers to death because they're like, I don't want them to be free because after they were free, you had to give them like land and right. shit, you know, and no one wanted to do that. Well, I mean, obviously, once you get over there, a you know. A slave is a long-term investment. An indentured servant, that's like, use them motherfuckers up. Yep. The more of them you S- use slave, up. Slave, it's like, keep that boy strong. His back needs to be strong to pick them fields. And it's like, the indentured, indentured servant, servant, they're like, just break him. Because at the end of it, I got to pay him money. So let's just try to make it so he doesn't make it. <laughs> and then, of course, the Chinese right. you were just talking about. Same you know, deal, basically. Oh, yeah, we're paying you. So it's a job. Well, here's your fucking half a shilling a month. You know? <laughs> yeah. Damn. I don't think I don't think Americans use shillings. TJ. Whatever. I'm just saying, you know, it's a pittance. Here's your half a shilling. <laughs> well, a lot of them were paid in something even worse, uh, more worthless than a shilling. They were paid in company script. Oh God! Yeah. Oh yeah, that's which, true. Which was used to buy things at company stores. Yeah, so that way, you know, you you everything was just provided for Did, you. Didn't by the Walmart company, actually you know? do that in Mexico? Yeah, they practically do it here. I mean, <laughs> yeah. a lot of these, a lot of the employees of Walmart stores end up spending all their money back at Walmart because well, they get the they get a, a reasonable yeah. discount on all right. goods. So it's basically like Walmart just gives them money, and then they're like, "Okay, you gave me money. Now here's the money back to you, Walmart." I mean, in Walmart's defense, pretty much all retail outlets do similar things. Sure, they, they want their <laughs> their employees to put as much money right back into the fucking that company as does, possible. Yeah, but that doesn't mean there's not a weird little parallel to the company store there. Sure, you know? sure, of course. I mean, obviously. <laughs> so, what do you think they? What do you think uh, happened when those people came over to So they they brought things with them, dude. So they, I mean, obviously some of them brought their they, they, Chinese they, medicine, yeah, but and, then, including snake oil, right? Made from the oil of the Chinese water snake, which is rich in omega three acids to help reduce inflammation. Snake oil in its original form really was somewhat effective, especially you, to you treat use, what uh, arthritis and uh, I think it's bursitis. Okay. The so, workers, so, the, ber- so actually, the workers would. So this is what they would actually do. They, they, they would rub the oil used for centuries in China on their joints after a long, hard day at work. Uh, the story goes that Chinese workers began sharing oil with some of the American counterparts who marvel at the effects. So uh-huh. it's just like 19th century Ben Gay or something. Yeah, just shit. like hey, rub this on your, oh, your your back hurts, your fucking shoulder yeah, hurts. Yeah, icy hot. Yeah. Okay. So people are like, yeah, this but like, it had some of efficacy. I mean, ostensibly, yeah, it had some efficacy. And okay. It's got omega threes in it. So. The question is how how did something that was seemingly kind of legitimate there's some legitimate source like people are using it and fighting or fi- like maybe like, even if it, there's actually not any proven effect the placebo effect <laughs> at least so how did this become a symbol of fraud uh, the the origins of snake oil as a derogatory phrase traced back to the latter half of the 19th century which saw a dramatic rise in the popularity of patent medicines often sold in the back pages of newspapers these tonics promised to cure a wide variety of ailments including chronic pain headaches female complaints. Female complaints. Uh, I think you guys dude. can guess what that is. Uh, kidney I trouble. I love that there had to be a kidney euphemism trouble. even then. Well, I mean, they can't be like pussy bleeding. <laughs> you know, like, it's a little uh, goddamn PMS and cunts. In in time, all these fake, uh, all, all these false cures began to be referred to as snake oil. They so, also brought opium, which is not a snake oil. So, so, well, yeah, I mean that, that actually does work too. <laughs> that works. But no one, I mean, no one's saying opiate. I mean, I don't, that, you know that heroin is a snake oil. I mean, obviously it, it fucking works. It does what it claims. And that was prop. That was, that was properly sold in America during that time period too. Heroin and a lot of these other drugs. Opium, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, they had the big opium dens. I mean, I don't know if they were like. I, I don't know if heroin them. was invented, but yeah, there was, there was the opium dens. Yeah. I mean, it's it, heroin is. No, it looked like the 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 one Curly Bill goes to in Tombstone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was imagining. Yeah. The fucking, yeah, and he gets all fucking crazy and goes out in the street and starts shooting at the moon moon and shit. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone out there in our audience hasn't watched Tombstone, that's a good fucking movie. Please do. Even if you're not a fan of Westerns, I think you'd like it. Also, it was truly directed by Kurt Russell. Yeah. Um, Yeah, whatever they say in the credits is bullshit. Uh, So anyways... uh, with snake oil, so people, that, like, obviously the term came from people, you know, seeing these Chinese people use it, and it's kind of like, that's snake oil, it's bullshit. You know, and then, of course, people... So the term snake oil is a racist term. Um, I guess you could, could construe it that way. Yeah, because they're Maybe. saying, it's basically saying, like, you can't trust that Chinese medicine. It also happens to be true, because it wasn't really... 
Yeah, you know. <laughs> right. So, as word of the helium power, pow, powers of the Chinese snake oil grew, many Americans wondered how they could make their own snake oil here in the United States. See, American ingenuity. Look, some people rubbing shit on their joints. Maybe we can do it better. We got snakes. We how got fucking, snakes here. How fucking difficult could it fucking be? What, you telling me them Chinese snakes cure shit, but our snakes don't? Bullshit. These are American so you know what, snakes, so you know what, my friend. We, you know what most people used uh, was actually rattlesnakes. I, I knew it was gonna be rattlesnakes because that just it's rattlesnakes. Something about that like just seems like it work on Why? a very visceral level. I don't know. Like <laughs> if you were told that you were gonna get oil from a snake and it was gonna cure you of something, right? Wouldn't your mind immediately go to like rattlesnake? rattlesnake. Yeah, maybe rattlesnake. Rattlesnake. So this set the stage for entrepreneur Clark, uh, Clark Stanley, aka. The Rattlesnake King. Yeah. Cool. The fucking Rattlesnake. <laughs> that dude sounds awesome. Why is this about I mean, what a fucking him? awesome nickname, dude. What was his name? Carl Stanley? Clark Stanley. Clark Stanley. A. The K. Rattlesnake a. King. The fucking Rattlesnake King. Cool. I mean, just think about our lives. Like, you wish I had a moniker like that. Yeah, your nickname. What is your nickname, yeah, Paul? Paul Zigo, P- a.k.a. Big Dick McGraw. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, TJ, you, you get TJ. Direction. I mean, that's all you get. I get Scotty. He gets the Rattlesnake King. God damn it. So in 1897, a, pan- uh, a pamphlet of about Stanley's life and exploits was published. Uh, the former cowboy claimed he had learned about the healing power of rattlesnake oil from Hopi medicine men. <laughs> Hopis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, those Hopis, man. <laughs> he communed with nature, and he found the truth. Of snake oil. <laughs> That's awesome. Come with me, white man, and I will show you the power of snake oil. Dude, we need to do like a, an episode sometime on like legendary scammers like this dude. <coughs> uh, so basically, yeah, that's obviously bullshit. He never publicly mentioned snake uh, Chinese snake oil at all. Stanley created a, a huge stare at the nineteen, uh, excuse me, uh, eighteen ninety three World's Exposition in Chicago. When he took a live snake, sliced it open before a crowd of onlookers. And this is a description of the event. Stanley reached into the sack, plucked out a snake, slid it open, and plunged it into boiling water. When the fat rose to the top, he skimmed it off and used it on a spot to create Stanley snake oil, a liniment that was immediately sapped, snapped up by the throng that had gathered to watch the spectacle. So it's like a stage show, basically. It's like, look, this is yeah. how we're making it. We're it's making a, it before your eyes. This is going to cure. And now, the whole time he's doing it, he's telling you all about how it's going to cure of you. Of course. And how it's going to help with your fucking joint pain and your sexual prowess. Dude, and- can you imagine the lack of accountability back in the day? How awesome it must have been. for like these. I, I kind of admire these dudes on a level. Why wouldn't you? Because like their whole point was like, pull into town, get a bunch of dupes to buy your shit. And then the next day, you're so far away that like... <laughs> You know what I mean? They can't come <coughs> complaining. Well, also there's a there's a placebo effect, so people yeah, some people that, are gonna be like, I feel better. A lot now. of people are gonna take it and be like, Yeah, this works. Yeah, word of mouth. And they yeah. tell their friends, Yeah, man, I, oh man, my arm was killing me. But then I put that snake oil on it, and three or four days later, pain was gone. You so, know, like it would have been anyway. I mean. There's a couple of really big problems with Stanley's claims he made about his oil. Basically. No, you t- what? <laughs> I don't so, buy it for first a second. Off, I don't buy it for a second. How dare you impugn uh, Stanley, I'm sorry dude. to have to do this, dude. He's the Rattlesnake King. Who the fuck are you? Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm not the Rattlesnake King, dude. Sniping at the throne. Where's your cool Scotty nickname? Scotty trying to shoot at the Rattlesnake I, I just, King, dude. I gotta take the pot shots where I can get them, dude. That's all You'd be I like do, the man. Duke of Slugs at best, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the Duke, the, of, Duke Slugs. of Slugs. You know? <laughs> He's the rattlesnake fucking king. He's several rungs above you, man. You can't be fucking dissing the I mean, well, I got I you know what? I mean, I have to, dude. I have, he never I have no said choice. he never said a false I mean, word look, in his We drew straws and life. I got the rattle I had to go up against the rattlesnake king. All right, all I mean, right. you so go ahead. You go ahead. I got to do what I got to do, man. I'm sorry. Uh, so first rattlesnake oil was far less effective than the original Chinese snake oil was trying to emulate. A 1989 letter uh, to the Western Journal of Medicine from psychi- uh, from psychiatrist and researcher uh, Richard Coonan revealed that Chinese oil contained almost triple the amount of vital acid to, as uh, as did the uh, the rattlesnake oil. So the vital acid that is, like, I guess, the effective and uh, like the active ingredient, there was three times as much in the Chinese snake oil as compared to the uh, North American rattlesnake. Right. Uh, secondly, so the Chinese snake was actually, in terms of whatever the 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 medical so, applicability of this. I shit mean, yeah. Was, well, let's not problem about this. You, you really need to hear the next one. Okay. Secondly. Stanley snake oil 
drum roll. It didn't contain any snake oil at all. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a pretty big problem. What did he do? What did he make it? So he didn't even make it out of rattlesnakes. It was uh, so like all part of the The legend. Pure Fu- Food and Drug Act of 1906 sought to clamp down on the sale of pad, mes- pad, uh, pad, excuse me, pad medicines, and it was legislation that led to st- this legislation that led to Stanley's undoing. After seizing a shipment of Stanley's snake oil in 1917, federal investigators found it, was pri- it primarily contained mineral oil, a fatty oil believed to be beef fat, red pepper, red pepper, and turpentine. That's wow. right. Stanley's signature product did not contain a drop of actual snake oil, and hundreds of consumers discovered they had been had. Cool. Damn. <laughs> Duped. <laughs> what a bunch of fucking dupes. So he wasn't actually even selling snake oil. That's the, that's the most beautiful thing about wow. this guy's story. That's the, that makes him an even better snake oil salesman. I I mean you have these fucking the dupes and, I mean like he goes to the world exposition I mean obviously he was going to small towns and other places in I mean that's the perfect just, venue for a snake oil salesman though cuz it's like the fair pulls out of town and then who do you call when the snake oil turns out to be fucking beef fat and red pepper flakes and turpentine and turpentine you know what I mean like who do you write to to bitch about that nobody <laughs> he's gone <laughs> he's gone and no one I mean like you know whatever I love it and dude. that's basically about that time is when the snake oil salesman just became the symbol of, of fraud because so many people been doing this and it was by that so time. that was when that was the era of actual snake oil or yeah. I guess even then it was it was right. bullshit but so well, the, the origin is like basically like you know ancient homeopathic you know Chinese medicine kind of shit I got penis yeah where it's like I mean I don't know what the efficacy of it is. It's probably not much, but it's probably better than nothing. You know, I, I'm not really sure. Maybe it did help the people's joints. We weren't around to fucking test it at that point. But so are we ready to get to the uh, the snake oil salesman we're looking at today? I think so. The man of the dun, hour. Dun, dun, dun. Dr. fucking Oz, dude. Dude, you know what? I, I You know what I love the most about this shit is that this dude's name is Oz. And if you think about it, the Oz from The Wizard of Oz was a snake oil salesman. Yeah. I mean, he was just like, yeah, I'll cure what ails you. Just do this impossible task. And they did it. He's like, oh, yeah. Pay no I'm attention just... to the man behind the curtain. He gives them a bunch of trinkets and shit. The same shit a snake oil salesman would do. It's like, oh, yeah, you need a heart. Well, here's a fucking pin that is shaped like a heart. Now you have a heart. Yeah, he's not only he scammed. He, he, he goes to Oz. He scams his way into ruling the country. Yeah. And then. When he's caught, he scams his way into escaping in this balloon. Well, he's literally, like, when Dorothy runs into him at the beginning of the movie, he's literally in a cart pulling between little towns selling his stupid remedies and shit. Yep. So he's literally a snake oil salesman. (laughs) And here we are with Dr. Oz, the great and powerful. I mean, the parallels. I mean, dude. I love it. Well, Paul, I mean, what I'm pretty, a, I'm pretty sure you know we live in a name. simulation, man, dude. This is, there's no, no coincidence, dude. Obviously. It just, you know, it, it runs out of unique things to do, and so it just rewrites the script and changes some principal details here and there. Nobody usually lives long enough to notice, but... I mean, this time we have, man. Yep. We have fucking noticed. Yeah, they didn't expect that we'd still remember who uh, the Wizard of Oz was all these years later. Yep. When they were writing the program. So, so they uh, just felt, they let me ask you guys this. Cycle in there. Let me ask you guys this before we actually get into his bio and all that shit. What do you guys? What do you know about Doctor Oz, TJ? Um, Anything? Th- here's the extent of my knowledge. All right, I know that he has a TV show where he peddles various medical remedies. I know that uh, a huge amount of people have criticized him for peddling pseudoscience. Uh, and false claims and exaggerated claims. I know that he's basically just like really what you said, the modern day equivalent of a snake oil salesman. He's a contemporary snake oil salesman. Have I ever watched his show? Not for a second. I've seen it. I've seen him like clips of his. What I think of when I think Dr. Oz is middle-aged housewives watching things on TV. Yeah. Like I he just seems like he's entertainment for them. Anytime that I've been exposed to him, it's like, uh, oh, how do you how do you shape up your hips, ladies? Or <laughs> how do you make your ankles not cankles? You know what I mean? Well, that, uh the market they're they're going for at that point uh in television is twenty five to thirty nine year old uh, women. Wow. There so you I, go. I mean there you go. Bored you, housewives. The, that's that's the most important demographic for daytime television. Of course, that's a lot of people say that's sexist to say, but right. I, it really is the truth. I have here a chart, a snake oil chart. This is very similar to the ones we used for uh, Dr. 
uh, Drew look, getting, his, getting his flex on, dude. Yeah, he's he look how to go flex. Look at him. He's an impressive. Pay man. no attention to the muscles behind the ladies' size medium T-shirt. But I have. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we have early life. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like just like uh, Doctor Drew and Doctor Phil, we're gonna appraise him in snake oil. Uh, we have his early life, his uh, pre-TV career, his TV career exploitation, and his greatest achievement. And all cool. the scores are currently. And we can zero. compare him against the winner and see if he gets more snake oil uh, than I the. I think uh, Doctor Phil got like forty six, and I think uh, Doctor Drew got like forty one, forty two, somewhere around there. So. Yep. Um, yeah, so it should be pretty interesting to see if Dr. Oz can take that top spot. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the early life of this cocksucker? Uh, so, okay, so Oz was born in 1960 in Cleveland, Ohio, to Suna and Mustafa Oz, who had immigrated from the Konya, uh, I'm not sure you say that, but uh, Konya or Konya province uh, in Turkey. Mustafa was born in Bazakur, a small town in central Turkey, and earned a scholarship that allowed him to immigrate to the United States as a medical, as a medical resident in 1955. So that's how he got to the U.S. What was this weird hairdo they were doing with kids back then? Yeah, what is that, the horseshoe or something? Yeah, I don't, I'm not really too sure about that one. I don't get it. Uh, Oz attended, and this is actually the same age, this is at age seven. Oz attended the private Tower Hill School in Delaware. It was there when he was seven that Oz decided he wanted to have a career in the medical field after watching his father bring uh, so much hope to patients he treated. I mean, who knows if that's oh true or God, not? That's fucking horseshit. But I was, uh, but what that, seven-year-old boy is like, my dad that's why brings I, hope to that's people. Wh- that's why I, 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 I. What seven-year-old boy gives a flying fuck about hope? Yeah. I took a look at my dad's bank statement, and that was the moment that I yeah, wanted exactly. to be a doctor. I mean, he was going to a private school in Delaware. Let's be honest. His dad was obviously doing really fucking. I mean, a lot of times, a a lot of people follow in daddy's footsteps. I mean, like Dr. Phil obviously did to some extent, but then he surpassed his father, which is, of course, everyone's dream of like, I'm like my dad, but better. But I mean, he came from a very, I mean, so his his father's a heart surgeon. I mean, he goes on to eventually be a heart surgeon. So, I mean, he comes from a very, you know, a background of academics and people who are obviously uh, very successful, especially in the medical field. So uh, he went on to study biology and received his undergraduate degree from Harvard University in 1982. Here's him playing football, yeah. by the way. Uh, while here, for his leadership, he was given the Captain's Athletic Award. So Dr. Oz is a Harvard graduate. So number one, I mean... No 100-6 to six loss in football like uh, Dr. No, Phil. nothing like that, dude. <laughs> the, the, the Dr. Phil blowout, dude. <laughs> Holy but shit. But as you can see, I mean, he, he's following pretty... I mean, like he's pretty much on the path in life. Like, he's obviously upper crust. He's doing the, like, okay, I mean, he, he, his dad's a heart surgeon. We saw the same thing in Dr. Phil's bio. To, I mean, it was, like, just, like, all bunch of all-American shit, you know? Like, yeah. football and doing well I mean, this is more than all-American. This all is, like... these guys, honestly. This is the American dream, kind of like, your kid goes to Harvard, dude. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in 1986, he earned an MDA and MBA degrees, respectively, at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine and Penn's Wharton uh, School. He was awarded the Captain's Athletic Award yeah, for leadership in college. I guess like, they got that again. Damn. Well, maybe that's, that's a fucking thing. But, so like, he was very active in uh, sports. Like, if you played football at Harvard, that was probably just a, a, a thing. I don't think he won that twice. But, I mean, so as you can see, he went to Harvard. He now, he now has the ability to practice medicine. He's going to become a doctor. I mean, like, this guy's life is pretty much just like... I, I, I mean, I, like, personally, I, I, you've made very few people that have these sort of accolades and achievements. You know what I mean? Yeah. And especially was on that path. So while he became a doctor. So, I mean, how did he end up being a fucking s- a snake oil guy? Well, we're getting to that, dude. All right. We're setting up his credentials. I mean. Yeah. This is his bio, dude. We're getting there, TJ. We're trying to rush the format. Damn, TJ. You just want to get to fucking look, TJ. This is why his. Skip it- to the end. <laughs> That's why his fall from grace is even worse, dude. Bag. Oz proved himself to be an exceptional surgeon, becoming a specialist in heart transplants and minimally invasive procedures. Early in his career, he treated a patient whose family would not allow a blood transfusion for religious reasons. So this was a big deal for him because, okay, basically the reason why was this, was that he wanted to do a blood transfusion. They obviously wouldn't allow it. And this is, obvi- this is when he, like, he had his come to Jesus kind of like, his, you know what? This is a quote from directly. I began to recognize that as dogmatic as I thought I could be with my knowledge base, there were certain elements of the healing process I could not capture. 
He said interview in Life Extension magazine. The experience okay. led him to seek out alternative treatments and combine them with Western mm-hmm. medical practices. So this is where it starts being like, <coughs> wait a minute. Uh, here's the thing about this from his biography that, that I don't think is true. His wife, um, who I didn't pull much about, is really big into like alternative medicine. Right. So she probably think they- saw the ability to slap his <coughs> name and saw he was an attractive, charismatic dude. And then he has this moment where he realizes, like, hey, we're wrong about how we treat medicine in this country. Like, they need other... I don't buy that shit. He was educated at Harvard. He knows that rubbing, like, beetle cream on your face isn't going to cure cancer. (laughs) He probably just realized, like, hey, there's a niche where I can make money. Exactly. There's... See, I don't buy this, like, rosy fucking bio that they put out there about themselves. Like, it was... When I lost my first patient that I realized we needed to take a look at other options. Bullshit. Fuck you, Dr. Oz. That's why I honestly pulled most of this stuff because when I read it, it was it had such a PR thing, and I didn't think we could just discuss how like obviously this is not the real fucking deal about this, right? Guy. But because like he's not, a, I mean like a lot of these people, the, the point is, is they kind of invent their own mythology. Oh, of and, course, and, and and they work with these big uh, media companies, then they obviously perpetuate uh, perpetuate that. Well, because you can't really sell it. Like if Doctor <laughs> Phil came waddling out, and he was like. Yeah, you know, the reason I do this is because I like to put big handfuls of suffering people's cash right in my big fucking oversized, gaudy-ass fucking Gucci pockets. You know what I mean? If he said that, you can't really sell that. But if he, if he makes up some story about, like, when I was little, I saw a man was psychologically tortured, and ever since then, I've wanted to heal the wounds. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you gotta them. come up with some stupid fucking thing. It's Paul, the same thing as a snake oil salesman. Paul, when TJ fisted you... How did that make you feel? Like, you can imagine one of these dudes rolling up on their cart going, my, my old grandmother had the arthritis so bad that she could no walk nor stoop to pick up the eggs from her garden. And yet I rubbed this snake oil upon her back, and yay, she picketh up the eggs now. You know the, what I mean? It's eggs like, from her garden? That's, that's some weird plants, dude. I mean, it's whatever. just weird that people like in these certain careers have to like, front like they're like motivated by like virtue and shit because like some we don't horrible to, thing happened to them that you know, made like, them like Ugh. we don't have to do that we don't have to be like man i saw that these you know orphans died of boredom and i realized then i need to be an entertainer and keep people entertained you know it's like yeah. why do we don't need some yeah, so, so donate to my patreon doing. immediately no one else does I so watched, no more bored african orphans die i watched my grandfather in his waning years <laughs> flipping through tv <laughs> looking for something desperate for something to entertain him and i just had to be an entertainer man <laughs> yeah it's like you had to do it we don't need that pretext just bullshit because we're not trying to sell anybody a cream they rub on their ass that <laughs> you know what i mean it'll make it less fat oh don't worry we'll, we'll watch clips from these shows dude you're gonna see that shit paul actually you know what paul uh you in particular uh, I think Dr. Oz is going to help your bad back. You want to look oh, at that? Sweet. Yeah, why don't we take a look at that? Let's take a look at how Dr. Oz can help Paul. Okay. And me, because I got, you know, my back you got is a bad back pretty too. fucked up. Let's see. This is, oh, wow. You know what this is called, Paul? What's it called? It's called 60 I mean, Second Back Pain. I mean, we're, sca- we're skipping fixes. a little ahead, but you know what? I think it's, I think it's worth it. I mean, you know, whatever. We got to play with back that pain format fixes. a little. Okay. Here we go. He's going to fix our shit in 60 goddamn seconds, Paul. You know, when nothing. you're hurting, minutes can feel like hours. So today, it's all about True. fast relief. I'm revealing my 60-second back pain fixes. I think going to start us off. That clock is a little pain fast. Fix your day. It slows me down. I have three kids, and in the morning, it's right. tough. I'm sore, low back pain. I'm sore. It's just annoying. I can't get around. All right, let's start our first 60 seconds. Fix second me, Dr. Oz. Ahead. Fix me. The best thing about this is it he is pretends he doesn't know all this shit about it. Like, it is a t- it's, really dude, when you really watch this, it's a total act. act. And it's so obvious. Are pretty cool. No, it's, it's not. It's an old treatment, but very effective. Never heard of it. Yeah, you can, you know, in the old days, they used to get the bags and soak them, you know, all this kind of stuff. It's called a new Fucking back. old days. I don't know how many have Ew. heard of that, but it, because of its healing and it's mending gross. properties. It's gross. looks like a fucking dirty diaper. Yeah, yeah. it looks like somebody, so, somebody with, cool, like, come under the label, a yeast infection had a fucking maxi pad on for a week. Oh, God. And it'll decrease swelling inflammation. Swelling inflammation gone, guys. Come on. So, wait a minute. My badass back is going to be fixed if I slap this on. How's this? Over, any in any way different than an actual snake oil. Look, Paul, inflammation. Super simple to get. You have inflammation. It's going to help deal with that inflammation. Just sit that? there. I'm just going to turn it down a little. Food stores. Yeah, so I'm seeing the grocery store right now as well. Um, and of course, you can always get them online. Yeah, okay. I mean, super uh, simple, super fast. Which is so, what is in this, Scotty? You know, Sixty second fix. Absolutely. I don't fucking know, dude. What do you mean? Back pain. That's what I'm telling you, dude. It's just like flip the clock. They have these different products. 
Devil's Claw. Devil's Claw. Oh, so how, so what, how, how's this yeah. going to solve it? Yeah, Devil's Claw. Oh, look, another. Another, another, treatment that's been, you know, another fucking product. Wait, so this is going to solve it even quicker. This is going to solve it in 30 seconds, dude. Folks. It's an anti-inflammatory. It works similar to the way some medications work. Okay. Yeah, and the nice thing it's about not it a medication, just so you know. A joint that's causing a lot of the it works back similar to how those medications work. Okay. And that okay. is over here. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is a sprig of rosemary from your joint. grandmother's okay. garden. People have heard of this, but they don't know what it really is. So what these are your hip bones, yep. right, the okay. pelvis bones. And then there's a joint between the spine in the middle okay. and those major bones. Okay. Right, in order to make it a circle that supports your whole body. And there's ligaments there, you get strained. Right. Uh -huh. You can see how important they are. They're big fix and thick. And you get fix them, you son I mean, of a it's bitch. It's really uncomfortable, and it travels up. So you see, now it's part of it. It's explained, like, oh, look, look, see, look, this, this is what's so wrong with you. This is why you're hurting. Soon, this is why you need this product. It's going to fix this. You want to take about 100 milligrams a day. Okay. Oh, is that like 100 milligrams a day of Devil's Claw. So, boom. So two products already recommended during this segment. So they've tried things. This segment is longer than 60 seconds also. Well, he's shown her three fixes. And that you can get a health food. There's a lot of fixes here, TJ. A lot of fixes. Three full blown. This is not just one so fucking fix, dude. Right to the, you know, the prescription aisle so Paul and TJ, there's two right. fucking fixes right now for your bad bags. You in the right direction. So let's say I do all this shit. I, I, you know, I watch this fucking idiot. He's a doctor. I slather that fucking cunt juice all over my back. I drink pop. that pepper nonsense, the devil's claws, and you I do whatever pills, that yeah. stretch was he was talking about that'll stretch out my clavicle muscle or whatever the fuck. And it doesn't Perhaps. fix my back. What culpability does he have? None. Oh, Paul, he, just, he just gets to do another to show next you, week with another bunch of non-remedies. He's trying to help you, Paul. I mean, come <laughs> He's on, helping dude. America, Paul. Yeah, what He's an idiot. Out. So let's take a look at the uh, score here. So early life. So what would you give our that? Pre, our, so so we, we, we actually did early life and... Some pre TV. And, pre and yeah, pretty much all. all I don't think his early life really had anything. No. So I mean, you know, whatever. He, does, he can't control that. So early life going from because of the fall from grace to like going from like I'm a Harvard trained doctor to maybe devil's claw and shit like that'll help because obviously he started that before he did his show. I want to give him at least five snake oils in the pre TV for the bullshit story about why he turned to alternative medicine. You know, early life, I didn't feel like he really deserved any. Yeah, pre TV. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm more like one, I think more like ten of them. One, one detail from pre TV that I think should be included before we guys make the okay. final judgment is in 1984 Oz established the Cardiovascular Institute and in Integrative Medicine program at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Okay. Media exposure followed, and he, he and with his wife he co-authored the book Healing from the Heart. A leading surgeon combines Eastern and Western traditions to create medicine of the future. Ten, which was released in 1998. Ten, I say I say ten. Okay, whatever, dude. Yeah, ten. Ten for that whole spiel of shit. <clears throat> I think that I think five for that and five for just the fact that he started doing this alternative medicine shit in the first place. Yeah. Um, so TV career, we yeah, start we need off. to know about his TV career now. I mean, he's in a lot of shows and spinoffs, but I just really c covered the the ones I felt were primarily important. So he started off with second opinion with Dr. Oz. Uh, so, him, I, I guess, so this is basically him and his wife again. The couple teamed up again to create Second Opinion with Dr. Oz, a television show that brought the surgeon's medical expertise to an even wider audience during its sole season in 2003. Guests included Charlie Sheen, Magic Johnson, uh, Quincy Jones, and Oprah Winfrey. So how did he get the notoriety to get that kind of <coughs> name <coughs> shit behind him? Like, uh, what, what, when did he, he was, explode? He's another Oprah Thing, oh, right? Oprah, yeah, uh, Oprah, Oprah uh, hit him with the magic but he, wand. But he was kind of in the periphery. Like he was like he was really trying to court like media exposure. Like he wrote a book. I mean, he had a very high profile position at a right. univer uh, Columbia University. Right. He's, just the fact, just the fact that he's Harvard educated and embracing the alternative medicine shit. He's obviously going to go rise to the top of that. Shit, actually, as much as they claim to not respect the medical establishment. Obviously, they want someone from Harvard to be on their side and being like, "Yeah, this alternative medicine shit. There's something to it." Well, he has an impeccable background right. and, and credentials. So someone like him saying, like, yeah, Columbia professor, you know, Dr. Oz says this treatment is, is, is worthwhile. They're good. Well, oh, there's something devil's to it. breath. Take some devil's claw, Paul. Jesus. Uh, so I actually pulled a, uh, there's a clip of second opinion with Dr. Oz. All right, I got it here. Uh, let's see. Second opinion. with. And very quickly, you guys are going to get a feel for what the show is like. World-renowned heart surgeon Dr. Mehmet Oz takes on the most critical health concerns of our times. 
Discover the future of medicine from those who are making it. So that's a big fan of the theme in his fans. Like, this is like the future of medicine. On second opinion. <clears throat> second opinion. As many as 40% of Americans say they've tried an alternative therapy. Wow. I'm just blown away by how legitimate this all seems. Yeah, well, it, it just seems like an infomercial. Yeah. But dressed I up. I keep waiting was... for him to pull out the blender, you know? Yeah. The Vitaplend blender gives you 50% more nutrients Nancy, per ounce. Royal Diamond cookware is made to last. And initial research shows that alternative medicine can work. Human touch work. has been linked to improved immunity. Dude, I one time got suckered into watching an infomercial. Yeah. Because it was like... Uh, it came on, and it looked just like this fucking thing. And some dude dressed like Dr. Oz, like, I'm going to prove to you by the end of this presentation that psychic powers are real. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm like, you're going to prove to me? Wow. I was like, okay. Sold. So I watched through the whole infomercial selling whatever kind of bullshit they were selling. It ended up being like a book or a training course or something. Uh, oh no! You, you, no, it was like it was some kind of like you know thing where you could like use your mind to oh influence events and all this shit. Anyway, then you need to watch more of this shit though, dude. This I'm get, gonna, but I just okay. want to set this up because I mean, like, this is just too good. And it's, all right, this is another form of snake oil. At the end of the fucking infomercial, after their sales pitch, like, all right, we're gonna now we're gonna prove to you psychic powers. And he pulls out a lemon, okay, and he slices the lemon like, as I slice this lemon. You could feel yourself salivating <laughs> without doing anything to you. I have affected you. And I'm, I'm like, what? Wait, <laughs> that's it. Pavlovian response. Yeah, I cut a lemon because because I control cut a lemon. you. And he described it a little. He's like, yeah, your mouth is watering. I induced a physiological response without even touching you or doing anything to you. That proves the efficacy of our system. Okay. Uh, Got it. You know Sold. What can, you, know what, you know what we can do? Let's go to a crowd, TJ, and bring a popcorn machine and start popping away. and have some, like, salty, buttery popcorn. Let's see if we, how many people we can psychically control to ask for some. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. In function. And back pain. <laughs> Second opinion with Dr. With massage. And finally, migraine Same headaches. massage, dude. Be controlled with acupuncture. Complex diseases require complex solutions. Alternative therapies can help make conventional therapies like chemotherapy more palatable. And sometimes they may even extend the lives of people who were never expected to live. Here's My name proof. is Marissa Harris. There are four stages of cancer. I was stage four. I have stage four. Oh, you have? Modern oh. medicine had given up on Marissa. She but then she started hitting a bowl with a stick, and now her and cancer is still riddling her body. Operable lymph nodes on her pancreas, <coughs> but that wasn't the worst news. My husband said, "Well, what does this mean in terms of Marissa's life?" And he at first didn't want to say anything, and then he said, "If she's lucky, maybe nine months." I kept on saying, well, isn't there something I can do? Wouldn't diet make a difference? And you know, he said no. And I said, well, what about supplements? And he said no. And I mean, the last thing I wanted was chemotherapy. And I said, well, what about chemotherapy? And he said, well, maybe you should do that because it might give you a couple of extra months. And he said, well, don't you think it's worth it? And I said, no. I said, would you do it if you were me? And he said to me, Probably not. With traditional medicine giving her just six months to live, fate led Marissa to Mitch Gaynor, a conventional doctor. I'm a medical oncologist, hematologist, and internist. With a totally unconventional approach to disease. You guys are going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Oh, my God. How did I know he was going to be hitting Burn. a bowl with a fucking stick? Burn. And doctor, here's Dr. Oz in his lab coat. <laughs> Selling singing ball touch, therapy to desperate yeah, cancer is, patients out there. And massage has proven to be effective, Paul. Oh, my God. And sometimes an extent. So this woman, is her, her, she has pancreatic cancer, stage four pancreatic cancer. And her doctor's having an honest conversation like, uh, best case scenario, you probably look, you're probably going to live another year or two. And what about chemotherapy, that poison, that bad stuff? He's like, maybe that'll work a little bit. Would you do it? He's like, well, no, not really, because you're not going to survive no matter what. You know what I would do? Stick my head in a singing bowl and let yeah. somebody hit it with a what stick. About, she, she, what about diets? You already have cancer. Your diet's not going to change the cancer. It's not going to make it go away. 
She, she, so basically, she's grasping for straws, and people like Dr. Oz and this fucking doofus are giving her false hope by going, this is going to release negative energy. Bung! Bung. <laughs> there goes your bung life! Bung. Oh, she's going to be healed! Cancer can be a tremendous turning point in somebody's life. In so what happens? Like, the cancer cells hear the bung, and they're, they're just like, like oh shit, we got to get out of here! Retreat! Retreat! You know, it's like the same. Our only weakness. You know the movie, the, the thing, TJ, where he heats up the fucking uh, like the wire and he jams it in the blood. It's gonna be like that, dude. They hear the boom. They're like, "Oop!" Cancer just jumps out of your body, dude. Yep. <laughs> Body's like, "Holy shit! It's time to fight this cancer." Someone just alternative therapies. Oh, yeah, my gone. only weakness. Yeah. Somebody rang a bell. Those Holy shit! Really learning about the proper way to eat. The proper diet. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good, but they already have stage four cancer. So I can tell by what's going on here that this guy, in addition to being a doctor, makes part of his nut getting roomfuls of desperate sick people together and telling <laughs> oh. them that if you let if you sit there quietly while I walk around the room and ring a bowl, you're but, gonna get but, better. But you saw how they couched it. Doctor Oz is like, look. In association with these other treatments, you know, so this, this is supposed to be like a, a right. thing you can bind with it. But it's like you heard, just heard from that woman's mouth, like I didn't want to do chemotherapy. So for one side of his mouth, he's saying like this is something good that also helps. Right. But then the first person he has on is like that's bogus and bullshit, and they didn't give me any hope. Chemotherapy, I'm not for me. Hitting a fucking ball over your head, that's the answer. You want to watch it because it's overwhelming. To your cancer. Because you know what it is? It's like someone that wants just overwhelming positivity. And this guy can be like, well, this can help with positive energy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fucking bullshit. Wow. This woman knows it's fucking horseshit. She's, she's just desperate and she's scared that she's going to die. And I understand why someone would be desperate and, and run to people like these. Say, oh, I can help you. Oh, just eat a vegan diet. And it, we're going to hit this gong around your head three times a day. And the cancer's going to go away. What do you want to bet that this guy's bell ringing seminars end with a, I hope you found healing today. And if you would like to uh, repeat this therapy by yourselves at home, you can purchase one of my uh, various sized singing bowls. You know what's great? As well as the tape for how to play oh, them. Of course. You guys know the movie The Man on the, Man on the Moon about Andy Kaufman. Yeah, yes. Andy Kaufman. And he wants to go to that healer yeah. and shit. And he's, yeah, the crystal healer. The crystal healer. And it's kind of like that's when he goes there and he kind of just laughs. He's like, or oh, the this... chicken. Yeah, the guy that's doing psychic surgery. Yeah, yeah. the uh, the the... The, the the I forget what they call it, like cutlass surgery. Yeah, and or he's whatever. got he's yeah. got like chicken parts. And in they his hand. reach into your body using spirit hands or whatever, and they pull out the infection. But really, they're just stuffing it in their hands beforehand, right. and you know, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's just, the same, it's just the same the shit, dude. Is really the fundamental difference between integrative medicine and the way medicine is practiced is just dealing with the Remember. symptoms. This is integrative medicine. Yeah, wow. so remember that, who, who started that, that sentence he just what's... said means absolutely nothing. If you could listen to that again, <sighs> the difference between medicine and integrative medicine is just that in integrative in medicine and medicine you deal with in the symptoms. In 1994, I must remind the audience, Oz established the Cardiovascular Institute and Integrative Medicine Program at New York Presbyterian Hospital. Integrative medicine, <laughs> got yeah, it. Yeah, integrate. So that's the, that. What is it? We integrate? integrate medicine with bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> integrate much. a bunch of unproven ancient world techniques like singing bowls and snake venom <laughs> therapy. When's, what's next? Leeching? For the last 10 years, That's ridiculous. Dr. has used ancient chants and sound to ease the fear and anxiety of his pain. All right, this is disgusting. <coughs> uh, it really is. So that that's part of his TV career. What else? Oprah, got? dude. Oh, his Oprah stint. All right. Do we have an Oprah thing? Um, I thought I pulled one. If you don't see one, though. Let's see. Dr. Oz fires back at critics. That's not it. CNN. No, I don't see anything like that. Oh, shit. It must not get out of the file. Oh, that doesn't matter. So basically, Oz appeared as a health expert on the Oprah Winfrey show for five seasons. And he was anointed by Winfrey, America's doctor. Oz embraced oh, his, his celebrity status with guest spots on a number of news programs and talk shows. And he also began publishing the best-selling You book series and penning columns for Esquire and other media outlets. Let me ask you guys something. We've, we've started dealing with the spawn of Oprah here 
with Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz. Yeah, I mean, at what point are we no, going to have to like, cut the head off the are dragon? We gonna, I mean, like, when do we go to the belly of the fucking beast? Is what I, I'm asking. Oh, that's gonna, shit, that dude. might even be a multi-parter because she has a storied <laughs> and checkered history. Because, I mean, like... I'm tired of tap dancing around the periphery of this horrible bitch and her fucking demon. Everybody's offspring. afraid to face her, TJ. No man wants dude, to you're pick facing, up sword or pike and go into the dragon's lair. Dude, you're facing the Hydra there, dude. She's one of the un. She's like, one of the it's untouchables. Like Beyonce, the Oprah, unmentionables. Dude. Yeah, I mean, oh, Queen Oprah, dude. Yeah, you don't fuck with Beyonce. You don't fuck with Oprah. You know. I mean, are you sure you want to do that, TJ? I mean, that's. But, it's a ballsy fucking move. I don't you know, know if you if you, I don't know if you got the ingredients, TJ. I don't know, man. Maybe we're fucking just like the dude in Tiananmen Square trying to stand up to the tank. But I mean, somebody's some got to do it. Someone's got to be that keeps fucking rolling guy. rolling all night long. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. We keep we keep dealing with her demonic little turds ruining the earth she's but crazy. we're not dealing with the asshole that's fucking shitting them out she used her position as a respected like talk show slash journalist personality to foist all of her crazy fucking alternative medicine beliefs on other people so and oh, pop man. psychology and all yeah that just shit. all of the bullshit well one Oprah's someone that's always been, you know, dealing with weight. I mean, that's, that's a big thing about Oprah. Is <laughs> it's everything because she's big. <laughs> well, no, dude, because she's always been one of those people that she's a yo-yoer. She, like, she'll be fat, then she'll be skinny. So, I mean, obviously, there's someone like Dr. Oz, there's a, definitely an appeal. He's, he's obviously embraced regular medicine, so he's like, I can trust you. But then it's also like, I also embrace, embrace like doing chants and cleanses and all kinds of other bullshit that people like Oprah think make them lose weight. Because, I mean, it, it does work. If you have someone like Dr. Oz, like, stand up your shoulder, and now you can do this, Oprah, and I can do this, it's like, I honestly feel like he just preyed on her insecurity well, and, her, mean, our, and, our, and her personal biases. I just want to see someone go up to Oprah and knock, the, like, a cake out of her hands and be like, put that down, you fat and I mean, bitch. I, and he's already, he's already <laughs> like, like, Dr. Phil, he's, uh, Dr. Oz is an adept social climber. Yeah, well, I mean, well, all these guys are, I mean, you The know. psychology of Oprah has been fucking crystal clear from the beginning. She's looking for the quick fix. That's why she balloons up to like 400 pounds and then loses it all and then balloons. Because she's always wanting the quick fix, the pop diet, the eat nothing but cashews and you'll lose weight diet. You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh, oh, I had a fucked up childhood, so what's the quick fix diet? You know what I mean? Or the, you know, si what's the quick psychological trick I can do to fix years of abuse from my father, you know, that type of shit. And, I mean, and she t turned a talk show into a behemoth. Like, she has her own television channel. She has her own network. She has her own magazine. She has her own everything. She produces movies and TV shows. And I mean, just everything. I mean, she had Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz, both of their fucking starts. Well, why do you think she was drawn to them, though? Because they're both quick fix snake oil Oh, sales. yeah, dude. They're, they're right. a perfect We're just match. like, oh, yeah, you've got cancer. Well, rub some valerian root on your elbow and that'll help. You know, she's, <laughs> she likes that. You know, that's the kind of expedient bullshit that she wants. And it plays well to audiences because people like that shit, too. They don't want hard work. They want the quick fix. You know why I'm still fat after all these years? Because you have a bad back. No, because I don't want to. Ultimately, because I don't want to put in the fucking work to get skinny. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, right. That's, I'm not now. That's a logical I, reason. Yeah. Right. And I've done the same thing that Oprah does. I just don't run around like evangelizing it to people. You know, like I've chased the stupid diet fad rabbit hole a few times and had yeah. varying levels of success, but I'm still a fat fuck pushing forty now. Because ultimately, every diet you undergo, and I know because I'm the same way, is like. It's like you go on a diet and then you're eventually you're off the diet. And the only way you actually keep weight off is if you just change your eating habits. Exactly. And we don't want to do that because you want to eat cake and Snickers and whatever the fuck. Else. It's because you're being intellectually dishonest. I mean, there's also, obviously there's cognitive dissonance going on, but you're being. I'm not being dishonest. I'm being honest about why I'm fat. Well, no, I no. eat too goddamn much and I don't want to work no, out. No, I'm no. No, no. In this state, you're not. When you're on a diet, you are. Is what I'm saying. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I'm. That's what I mean. No, no. What you just said now, I, I totally agree with. But sure. yeah, when you're on your diet, like you and TJ, like it's weird about them. They both assume this kind of thing. They're like, like they're like, it's like this optimism, upbeat. Like you know what? This is gonna be the time. I mean, maybe I'm gonna you fucking got, you change my fucking life, dude. If you go into a diet with like this is just gonna fail like every other time, if that's your mindset, you may as well, well yeah. just keep eating pizza. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I know that. You're not gonna be able to stay on it. So you have to lie to yourself to to a certain T TJ, extent. But when I was with TJ and Paul, doing, I have my this is my latest diet plan, Scott. You love oh, this. Oh god. Okay, yeah, let me hear it, dude. Because I always come up. I, I just come up with my own half baked shit now. But my plan is. 
make the decision slightly better than the decision that I actually want to make, even if it's still not a great decision. Is that what led to the burger with jalapeno all over it today? Yes. What were you going to get instead of that that was the less good decision? Well, I mean, I probably would have just eaten the whole burger. But oh, okay. No, what I oh, did, have. You know what I did to alleviate? I'm like, I ain't going to drink sweet tea. Oh, oh no shit, carbs dude. in my drink. That's what I'm going to do. Wow, TJ. And then when I went to the store later and got a thing of chocolate milk, normally I'd buy the big thing of chocolate milk, but I just yeah. bought the little thing of chocolate milk. So you're just going to drink <laughs> it faster and have to go get more chocolate milk quick. You know, who knows, dude? I'm just saying whatever decision I truly want in my heart, I try to make the one that's just like well, slightly less bad. If you if you think like, let, let's say by doing that, you reduce your calorie intake by 15 to 20 percent. Well, I'm, my but, hope is that my baseline you lose- for the decision I want to make will like continue to just go down until eventually by the time I'm like 80, I'll You're be like- eating healthy. I mean, I'll have the the carrot sticks and celery platter, please. Yes, exactly. Dude, I, I, I've been with TJ a couple times when he was eating healthy at restaurants, and it's really bizarre because it'll be TJ be like, uh, what vegetables do you have? And it's like, she just asked for fucking vegetables? It's pretty weird. And then he'll eat it all, and he'll be like, I'm like, was that actually good, TJ? And she just like, it was fine. And I'm like, and I'm like, and she just mine. It was probably like every bite was just like, his fucking arm just feels like lead, and it's like a weight he has to raise up, like, ugh. Eat healthy. It's good. It's tough. I hate vegetables. I'm not too keen on like fruit. I don't. I'm pretty well, if much... you like those things, you'd be skinny. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I like Hostess donuts and chocolate chip cookies and things of that pizza. nature. Pizza. Yeah, I mean, Pete. Well, pizza I could take or leave. I'm not too. I mean, most people can empathize pizza. with That's you, like anyways, anyways, though. I'm in love with pizza. I'm I can not, eat pizza every goddamn day. The only thing day. I'm truly in love with, really, is like mostly sweets. Oh, see, I'm not a sweets guy. I'm all about it. I'm, I got the fucking, I got a t- the sweet tooth runs in my fucking. But you family. know what? You know what though, Paul. And one thing I'll say about this is maybe fat kids got made fun of more in like real life. I mean, dude, you guys are now the majority. They don't think I'm gonna make it. I mean, you still get made fun of. Guys. I mean, you still get you guys still get matter. made fun of, I and mean, you should. But you guys should be made fun of too. Not only will I live what to I'm be saying, I'll live to be. You should be because because everyone is supposed to get made fun of, Paul. All right. Anyway, everyone is. Everyone's supposed to be made fun of. So yeah. that's why Oprah's... Can't take yourself so seriously, dude. Oprah loves the fucking diet fads. But uh, let's see. Is there anything else from Dr. Oz's TV career? Of course there is. Let's get let's get to it. Let's talk about it. Oh, there's it. a cornucopia of bullshit. Dude, there's the Dr. Oz show, of course. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the logo I've put, had up forever. Put, put up the fucking logo, T. It's up. You want it up all, all, all the way? Here we go. I want everyone to fucking look at... Look, dude, simple... Look, Dr. Oz is like... A, he's on the fucking edge of the box, dude. You see what I'm saying? He's not in the box. He's on, he's like on the box. You see what, what, you see what it combines there? Teaching Eastern and Western medicine, traditional, non-traditional medicine, dude. That's what this logo is supposed to invoke in you. Wow. It doesn't. It doesn't? No. So, Oz rose, uh, basically rose to popularity, as we know, on the Oprah Winfrey show. This was about... So, this is about 2009. So, Oprah, wanting to cash in on this shit, is like, Dr. Oz is really fucking popular. Give him his show. Let's get let, at let, this point. Let's do a she's, spin-off. Already, she's already made a bunch of people's careers at this point. So it's just another like, you know, Oprah has the power of the just industry went, to just snap her fingers and make someone a thing. Like when when Oprah gives you a show, it's like, you know what? You have fucking sucked Oprah's clit so good. You have kissed her ass so thoroughly. And and, and also Oprah fans like like you. Like the Oprah fan base is like, Dr. So Oprah's like, you know what? Queen Oprah's going to give you a show, sweetie. So in 2009, Dr. Oz gets a TV show. So the Dr. Oz show debuted in 2009 uh, uh, to the highest daytime TV ratings on record in nine years and went on to win three consecutive Emmy Awards. So instant hit. In addition to hosting the TV show, Oz can use to serve as vice chairman and professor of surgery at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons. Uh, he also branched out into a new form of media in 2014 with the launch of his own uh, lifestyle magazine. Uh, by the way, the show's watched, I mean, I've seen estimates between 2.7 to 4 million viewers daily. Wow. So every day, two, 2 million plus people, like 2.7 to 4 million, million people, you said, are yes. tuning in daily to watch Dr. Oz sell them snake oil. And it's 
I don't know if you did you play about the demographics. Is it mostly like Paul said, middle aged housewife? The main demographic kinda... for that time slot is twenty five to thirty nine year old women. Okay. Dun dun dun. Bored housewife time. Maybe not middle aged quite, but yeah, so, approaching it. So you know, younger to middle aged housewife. I mean, not young, young, but like you know, you know, yeah, yeah. The, uh, late twenties to, to the forties. Like you know, a bunch of thirty year old women yep. bored at home watching Doctor Oz to learn how to what cellulite. And you saw this. I have cellulite you on saw my the back thighs, Doctor Oz. Uh, they've done episodes on topics such as vaginal rejuvenation. Whoa, oh. rejuvenation? How does that work? Uh, Sometimes your plumbing down there gets a little dry with age. What but does it here's need to be seventeen. Uh, it's, the, it's actually the appearance. Oh, so it makes the rub pussy some look valerian better? root on your pussy. It's a surgery, I think. Is oh, what it, the, the so he's peddling yeah. surgeries on his show. Yeah, elective vaginal well, surgeries. They, they become increasingly popular, apparently, to make oh. your pussy look better. Whatever that means. They just they just take a fucking uh, thing and they just cut out the outside. You know, smoothers out. <laughs> Just kind of scrape it off. I mean, they've done over a thousand episodes. Gross. They've done all kinds of episodes. They, uh, they actually did an episode with our great and wonderful president, Donald Trump. What? Oh. Donald sweet. Trump was on Dr. Oz? Donald Trump was, in fact, on Dr. Oz. Do you Oz. have the clip? Uh, you can find it if you want. I do want. Uh, so anyways, uh, it's uh, you guys may not, may not know this, but Dr. Oz is actually a registered Republican. So, of course he is. He's a fucking huckster lying piece of shit. All these dirt bags are Republicans. Dr. Phil, Republican. Dr. fucking uh, Drew, Republican. So, Dr. Oz, Republican. Dr. Oz actually gave Trump a pretty glowing uh, health report. I'm shocked. Let's see. Let's take a little look at this. Come on, Dr. Oz. There are 53 days between now and Election Day when Americans head to the polls to vote for president. Our report Trump. released this week shows this is a major cause of stress in America. And as a doctor, first and foremost, I'm... You gotta deal with that stress. And she's considered... Oh. Yeah! Woo! Yes. There's the Trump alone. Trump, 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 It's me, Donald Trump. How you doing? I'm not gonna really greet anybody. I'm just gonna kind of like... smile at you. I'm gonna point at you. I'm gonna laugh. He loves to clap for himself, dude. Yeah, me. I'm here. I guess in its own way, it's a 15 inch trail. Well, it's a lot of work, you know. I think that's fine. I think it's fine. Or are you so trying to skip We to wanted it. to get well. I'm just trying to get so to one of the fine. questions. How do you stay healthy on the campaign trail? Well, it's a lot of work, you know, when I'm speaking in front of 15 and 20,000 people and I'm the up there using The correct answer to that is I don't. Uh, I yeah, guess he doesn't look way, at him. It's a, uh, it's a pretty healthy act. And, uh, it's a pretty I healthy really act. Pretty healthy to, act to campaign. Ooh. <laughs> you burn a lot of calories campaigning. Because clearly Donald Trump was getting was staying in great shape on the campaign trail. Great. Oh yeah. So so Doctor Oz yeah, he, was like, yeah, this is a healthy man. This is a big. Oh yeah. Fat, he actually does say that. Man. Like like they go. Uh, you if you find the part where they look at his uh, his paperwork, like, like his uh, uh when his medical records. I'm I've had no. Nope. Uh, Trying to find uh, the medical records part. Do, 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 do. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. It looks like really this is broken up into like multiple uh, parts. Is experimented it? with Look down below. Hormone oh, right. problem. Whatever. I'm not going to find it. The, but whatever. So Dr. Oz basically at the end of that says, you know, Donald Trump is super healthy. Well, right? there's a there's a point in it where like he's looking at his like blood pressure and his cholesterol and like his, his other like, you know, basically, you know, Testing they do to see they give a barometer of what your health is. Yeah, and he's, his health's phenomenal, right? Yeah, and he's like, these are really desirable numbers. I'd be really happy to see my pa if you were my patient to have these numbers for you. Your <laughs> Wonder what he would have said if Hillary was on there. I, I don't think he would have been as favorable. <laughs> not at all. Uh, not not even fucking close, dude. So that basically covers the, the TV career for him as far as the main stuff he's mainly involved in. When people would know him from, like he's like I said, there's a spinoff show on. Own the Oprah Winfrey Network, where um, it's about him, like as a surgeon. Cool. Uh, I mean, so there's there's a few other shows and properties he's been, he's been attached, and he's been attached to a lot of stuff. But I mean, since we're doing uh, limited to TV, this is the main TV. So I'm saying, like, I don't know, that was pretty bad. Uh, twenty twenties, where I'm pro yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, the exploitation show. When we get to that section, you guys are gonna award a lot of fucking points. All right. So he's at thirty so far. What's his exploitation? Oh. Tell us about it, Scotty. 
so we'll start off with this. Let me go ahead and put up his uh his nice little thumbnail I gave him here with all his money. <laughs> <laughs> So popular science, the New Yorker, have published uh, critical articles on Oz for giving, quote-unquote, non-scientific advice. These criticisms uh, include questioning if he is doing more harm than good and point out irresponsible and dangerous treatment of uh, eating disorders. I have a few articles here if this is yeah. oh, one so, of these up. Oh, we're going to get to that next. Uh, okay. The James Randi Educational Foundation has awarded Dr. Oz the uh, Pegasus <laughs> Award. Award intended to expose parapsychological, paranormal, and psychic frauds that Randy has noted uh, has noted over the years. <laughs> you know, I don't like following one person blindly, but if you have gotten on James Randy or his foundation's bad side, you're I'm pretty sure you're a piece of shit. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously part of the message of James Randy is don't trust anyone, even me, but um He's pretty yeah, good at finding is, these fucking... He's pretty good at fucking, you know, getting them out there and exposing them like Yuri Geller and, you know, these, these fucking fraudsters and shit. So you want to hear some of the reasons he's won? Because he actually won this award multiple times. Uh, in 2009, for the promotion of energy therapies such as Reiki. <laughs> Reiki? What the hell is Reiki? <laughs> Probably that singing It's like bowl Japanese bullshit. spiritual healing. Great. Uh, in 2010, for support of faith healing and psychic communication with the dead, among other controversial practices... <laughs> Oz idiot. became the first person to... Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Psychic communication with the dead? Uh, yes. So Dr. Oz... Dude, Dr. Oz runs the gamut, dude. He really does. He's a, there's over a thousand episodes of his show. Well, he, Oprah is... Oprah's no better. Yeah. Oprah was known for popularizing these pop psychic bitches. She'd have them on the show to yeah, do readings of her audience and shit. So why do you think... He, why do you think I she, don't know, man. I, I just assume that because that's not even in the realm of medicine that he wouldn't be involved oh, by in the that way, racket. Uh, because he won this right after. He became the first person to win the Pegasus Award two years in a row. Cool. Uh, in 2012, Oz won the Pegasus Award for refusal to face reality for his continued promotion of quack medical practices, paranormal belief, and pseudoscience. Wow. Dude, yeah, like I said, dude, if James Randi is up your ass, you got a problem. I mean, winning his, winning his like biggest bullshit award at least three times. Yeah, being I mean, the probably, first person to win it twice. And I mean, that, that was the first three years, basically, that Dr. Oz was really doing his show. I mean, I'm sure at that point, James Randi was like, there's other fish to fry. Right, yeah. I I mean, I mean, make, the doctor, make it the Dr. Oh, dude, Oz award. One thing uh, uh, we haven't really talked about is how much the medical and scientific community fucking hates Dr. Oz, dude. Oh, I, well, I can fucking, see why. I mean, we'll, we'll cover some shit about that in a minute, but they fucking load this dude. He gives them a bad name. I mean, he really does because he's like, hey, look, I know these other people are saying this. this look at him. And all this promotional advice. shit, he's dressed up in OR scrubs or like a doctor. He does a show coat. like that, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's to give the appearance that this is totally 100 fucking percent legitimate. I'll kind of a medical doctor. Yep. I'm not evaluating you personally, but I'm telling you that this is really good advice. Well, just because he went through the schooling to become an MD doesn't mean that everything that comes out of his mouth is gospel. Oh, and we're gonna, the disingen uh, we're the, gonna get the, to that. The disingenuity of wearing that fucking outfit in front of people while you're telling them you can talk to your dead relatives is just fucking staggering. This dude went to Harvard. He knows that singing bowl therapy and talking to dead relatives aren't a thing. All these guys have that in common, though. All three of these snake oil fucks that we've looked at are well-educated dudes that ought to know better. In fact, do know better. That's the problem. Yeah, they do know better. So, Chidi, I want you to uh, pull up the article. We had uh, five not so miraculous Dr. Oz claims. Okay. Let's see here. Here we go. And you can read that if you like. Why don't you put it on the screen? Uh, Dr. Mehmet Oz has made a name for himself in part by touting miracle cures and weight loss products, but the TV personality is now facing fire from critics. For making health claims that are not supported by scientific evidence. Well, no shit. And uh, they're talking about the Senate hearing, and we're definitely we're going to play a clip of that as well. Uh, Oz was strongly criticized for his claims about weight loss supplements in a Senate hearing in June of 2014. Now 10 doctors from around the United States have called for Oz to be removed. Uh, the faculty of Columbia University in and New York, where he is. I have actually believe we have a clip of that. We actually have a clip of that, too. Surgeon. You do? Okay. Yep. Well, should we play those? Uh, well, let's actually get down to his uh, his claims, so okay. people can see some of the things he's he said. These so are some, of the, these are some of the claims here, right? So, yep. magic weight loss compound. 
Yeah, dude. Oz has claimed a long list of products uh, can help people lose weight, but perhaps the most dubious is green coffee extract. Yeah. So green coffee extract. I mean, I don't even know how fucking he, he can have, pretend to have any credibility, dude. So here's what he said. You may think magic is make-believe, but this little bean has scientists saying they found the magic weight loss cure for every body type. Oh, man. And by the way, we're going to talk about this magical weight loss miracle, these cures. We're, gonna talk, we're actually going to talk about how many times he's actually said those. Like, so this is, but this is his most egregious one that people really got on him for. So he said GMOs are unhealthy. No, oh, read the bot last paragraph, though. Foods containing ingredients from genetic... Uh, no, 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 on the other one. But, oh. the, the, but the only scientific study that supported the claim was funded by the product's manufacturer and has been retracted. The, uh, the blog Retraction Watch reported in October. So basically, Dr. Oz won his show and told people without any scientific evidence that uh, uh, was it green coffee extract would help them lose weight. Not only that, but scientists are saying that they found the yeah, magic scientists. weight loss cure for every body oh, type. Oh, but hey, guys, Dr. Oz is later going to claim he's never heard of that, never profited from it, but that's okay. Yeah, scientists would never say they'd found the magic cure for anything because scientists <laughs> don't believe in magic. It's the magic cure. So GMOs, which I mean, a lot of people say this. Oh, my God. So. I hate these fucking people, dude. These Franken... Look. Franken food. I, d I definitely agree that if you're going to modify genetically an organism, that there needs to be studies done. You need to keep an eye on it and shit. But, like, the idea that genetically modified food is bad for you is ridiculous because we've been eating it for generations. Not only that, but, like... It's not like they're putting something foreign into it. All they're doing well, is... Well, that's what a lot of these people allege, is that they're, they're adding things to the genetic code of these foods. Well, they are, I mean, but they're, it's just more genetic code. It's still just the same basic right. genetic material. It's just been altered. It's like, it's going to grow faster now or some shit. Well, the, the pro here's the problem when you make these claims about GMOs, is that the reality is, is no one really knows what impact they're going to have. I mean, yeah, have. maybe they're... Maybe there's some sort of impact, but there's no scientific. But, but, incredible but you don't know. That's what I'm saying. So anything you say is just speculation. Well, it's like, like it's going to make you do this or do that. All or, you have to do is bring up the banana to them. Like just look at look at what a wild banana used to look like. I'll just walk up to pull one right now, out of my ass. It, and, yeah. Like how is it different for us to genetically modify an organism by selectively breeding it over the it's course not. of generations? It's just faster to do it in a lab. That's the only or difference. just intercede in a lab and take those genes and make them what we want. Franken yeah. food. So, I mean, like, really, humans have been genetically modifying food and, and animals. animals for a long time. Uh, it, they just did it through a different process that was slower. Um, cure for the common cold. What? Okay, yeah. What? Um, wait a minute. Read that root, TJ. I want to I hear you pronounce that oh, root. Dude, he, uh, that's why this is going to be great. Dr. Oz has touted umkaloabo root <laughs> extract as a remedy for the common cold. It has been incredibly effective at relieving cold symptoms, and a new study shows it helps the flu, Oz said in a video. Uh, there has not been much science to back up the medicinal benefits of this extract, but it can have side effects. Uh, there is weak evidence that an extract from the root of the plant Pelagonium, Pelagonium <laughs> sedoids whatever whatever the fuck Flatten. could shorten the length of respiratory tract infections and relieve symptoms according to the national institute of health but these extracts can have side effects like stomach and bowel problems so yeah like, you want to trade that upper respiratory infection for some horrible bloody diarrhea yeah it's gonna be good cure for restless legs oh, here you go that. dude TJ, you have restless legs. Oz's health claims aren't limited to dietary supplements. He once recommended that people with restless leg syndrome place a bar of lavender soap underneath their bed there sheets, you go. suggesting the floral smell may be relaxing. What? Yeah. So, like, what is, how is the that smell distinguishable? smell of lavender, dude. How is that distinguishable at all just from j getting, like, a Glade plug-in that's lavender Oh, scented? it's chemically, dude. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Put it near your bed. What the... Oh... So the lavender soap that's under your pillow isn't chemically, though? No. No. Teeth whitening. Organic, Paul. Uh, he's promoted a do-it-yourself method for whitening your teeth, brushing them with a mixture of strawberries and baking soda. Oh. The method does not actually whiten teeth and may, in fact, weaken them, according to a <laughs> study published in 2014 in the journal uh, Operative Dentistry. When the strawberry baking soda mixture was applied to extracted human molars for 10 days, it produced no discernible whitening, the researchers found. The homemade mixture lacked the chemicals hydrogen peroxide 
and carbamide peroxide, which are essential ingredients in tooth whitening products, according to the American Dental Association. In addition, strawberries contain a high concentration of citric acid and trace amounts of malic acid, which can degrade yeah, teeth. Yeah, so they literally put this on these teeth for 10 days, and it's like, didn't do anything. Sweet. And people are not putting it on. Dude, let's be honest. People are not brushing their teeth for fucking 10 days and leaving this shit on, so it's ineffective. Dude, I think my mom did that lavender soap thing. Really? really? I think I remember her telling me that she Because it put... says here at the end of that that uh, there have been many, there have been anecdotal accounts of using soap to cure nightly leg cramps with no scientific reason. So it's like basically an old wives' tale. I, I could have sworn that my mom mentioned that to me at some point. Put the I don't know soap if she got under your Oz. pillow. She put soap in the, yeah, soap in the bed sheets. I, I, I don't know. She's, she watches this shit. Like my mom would be a good guest for this because she watches this daytime TV shit. Yeah, I well, wish, I mean, I wish we could have her input. <laughs> Tell so, us so we'd hear what she thinks about Doctor Oz. Oh, you're all wrong. Oh, he's him. wonderful. He's wonderful. wonderful. He's a great man. Very smart. So, how about we pull up the article about the 16 weight loss miracles, DJ? All right, we're not going to read the whole thing. Weight loss but... miracles. 16 of them. So why is there still an obesity epidemic? Because people, not enough people are watching Doctor Oz, obviously, and everyone in Doctor Oz's audience felt felt. Oh, yeah, dude. No fatties in his audience. This article just lists all the miracle uh, cures that Dr. Oz has found to lose weight. Let's see. He actually found 16 of them. Cool. All right. So I guess it's uh, in the body of the article here. Yeah. Um, Whew. Uh, Miracles, revolutionary breakthroughs, silver bullets. In the real world of weight loss, they manifest rarely, if ever. But what if I said that you could regularly discover simple ways to change your life, all from the uh, cushioned confines of your sofa? Mid-afternoon, your living room, a magical time and place. With a mere flip of the television channel, you can enter a fantastical realm where magic is a common occurrence. Welcome to the Dr. Oz Show. You may think magic is make believe, oh, yeah. but read this little this we read this quote. Yep, it's green coffee extract. Uh, next one, I've got the number one miracle in a bottle to burn your fat. It's raspberry ketone. <laughs> okay, I mean, like, I mean, you don't have to read this whole article, but Garcinia Cambogia. It just, it just goes on and on. It's like every every fucking. So this is just him. Every six different... months or whatever. He, yeah, because he knows they need a novel product. That's good. Look, look. In the weight loss industry, that's why I think they're always changing diets and changing supplements. It's because people have to believe that's when it's going to help them lose weight. It has to be some new thing. It's like, okay, well, I didn't lose weight before, but now that I'm going to do it, now that I'm going to use this extract, now I'm going to lose weight. <laughs> Even though most times there's no scientific evidence suggests that's going to help you lose weight. Yeah. It's all just bunk. People are basically buying bunk products peddled by people like Dr. Oz and people in bed with Dr. Oz. So scientists... Uh, are we ready for this? Yeah, we're ready for this now. Scientists tallied up all the evidence on Dr. Oz's show. Half of it was baseless or wrong. <laughs> I got to admit, at this point, I'm not surprised about the half that was baseless or wrong. I'm surprised about the half that was fucking apparently accurate. Well, you got to throw some like just generic good advice out there to maintain a veneer of respect. Yeah, don't drink and drive. Alcohol's yeah. bad for you. <laughs> you know, you definitely want to temper this with exercise. You know, he's going to throw that type of shit out there to maintain to maintain the vestige right. of credibility that keeps him afloat. But really what the show's about is now let's get to the raspberry ketones and talk about how you can just drink, add a drop of this to your Pepsi and lose weight. <laughs> Sitting on your couch watching me. All right, so let's see. For years, I've been looking at some of the dubious and harmful health claims TV doctors make on their shows. In carefully examining Dr. Oz, unpicking uh, the evidence behind the products he peddles, I came to the conclusion that, on balance, the bulk of what he uh, has to say is misleading at best and total nonsense at worst. Uh, now science has confirmed my suspicions. Researchers writing in the British Medical Journal last December examined the health claims showcased on 40 randomly selected episodes of the two most popular internationally syndicated health talk shows, The Dr. Oz Show and The Doctors, which is one of Dr. Phil's enterprises, as you'll remember. Yep. Part, um, part, same, a part of the same Hydra, basically. They identified 479 recommendations from the Dr. Oz show and 445 recommendations from the doctors, finding that on average each episode contained about a dozen bits of health wisdom. By randomly selecting the episodes instead of cherry-picking the worst offenders, their findings gave us a true picture of the quality of the health claims that are being made. 
And what they found was disappointing, but not exactly surprising. About half of the health recommendations had either no evidence behind them or uh, they are actually contradicted what the best available science tells us. Wow. So just flat out wrong. <laughs> so let's take a look at these pie charts, if we can get them to come up here. So um, one of these is uh, Dr. Oz. One of these is the doctors, I guess. Correct. It doesn't really tell you I which think Dr. Is Oz which. is on the left, and the doctor's uh, so on the right. So I guess right. it's probably in the order they're saying here. So yeah. th- this is Dr. Oz over here. Um, supported by evidence, 46% of his claims. <laughs> Uh, not found in the literature, 39%. Contrary to the best practices, 15%. Oh. So a majority of things he says are baseless. or it's Total no nonsense. Yeah, the no doctors evidence. does a little better. Uh, 62% supported by evidence. 23.8% not found in the literature. And 13.9% contrary to best practices. About the same slice of the pie. Uh, total contrary evidence. Or yeah. total contrary. So Dr. Advice. Oz is... I mean, even worse than the doctors. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of stunning. I mean, based yeah, on the, at least the theirs is kind of like They're, a majority of the shit they say is true. Yeah, at least they can say oh, like some we de- have a oh, there's a degree of credibility to it. Although, if you're going to call yourself the doctors, shouldn't that be like ninety nine ninety nine percent? Yeah, like if it's a bunch of doctors that are apparently good enough to be on television saying it, shouldn't it be like? Almost everything they say is 100% accurate, and when it's not, there's a retraction, and like, a correction. you know, as soon yeah. as possible. But no. Uh, well, let's be honest. How many asses are going to be in seats for the fucking the scientifically accurate show? About as many as there are now. <laughs> not too many. Yeah, like, exactly. you got a show that touts itself as having a bunch of medical experts on, and we're over here quibbling about how much bullshit we should accept out of them. Like, fuck that. Zero. <laughs> Zero percent. No bullshit. If it's not fucking backed by medical science, you don't talk about it. You don't recommend it. At least you don't okay, do it Paul, under the guise of being that, a doctor. And, right. And, and, and Paul's fantasy world, maybe that's true. In America, it's the, it's not the yeah. exact opposite. There's these people, no... Paul, well, isn't, it it ob- be. isn't it obvious these people don't want the truth or so don't is care? That, does that conclude this section, Scotty? Or, uh, That'd or be like a lawyer having a show and be, being like, listen, new studies out today, talking to the cops... Great idea. I know the conventional wisdom, guys, is that you should never talk to the cops and always call your lawyer first. But actually, sitting down and having a conversation about what you did and didn't do turns out to be a great (laughs) idea. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) yeah, the worst kind of advice ever. And people just go, "Okay, yeah, makes sense. You know what I mean? That's tolerable. Why? But because this is medical advice, it's any different. Should I murder my spouse for the insurance money? It's the source, Paul. Telling some woman that's got cancer to not get it's chemo and instead go to singing bowl treatment therapies, that's not a problem? It's a bunch of fucking oh, average Americans, dude. They're sitting at home, and there's a guy that's like, look, I'm this fucking super legit fucking medical doctor. I was on Oprah. I'm a fucking surgeon. Blah, blah, blah. All his credentials. I went to Harvard, and I'm giving you this advice. And they're like... It's just sad that being on Oprah is a credential in some people's minds. It really is. Yeah. And I'm just saying, like, to that, to that audience, that's just so appealing. It's like, and, they, and they honestly buy into all this shit. They're like, you know what? Yeah, you can do this to lose weight. Because all his concerns are all... It basically it mirrors the concerns of his audience. Like, they just look at that demographic and go, what do these people buy and what do they want to be sold? Yep. So is that'd there, be like an ex- it's actually not like all the a, like a doctor there more of e- to the exploitation yeah, there section. Is. Oh, okay. Like a doctor of economics do having a show like this and going like the best thing you can do for your financial future is to take every bit of money that you have to <laughs> a casino and bet it on one roll of the roulette wheel. Oh no, dude. Unless the doctor no, the, you know what's you know what's actually even, an even better example? It's like uh oh, by the way, I also I have this company I work with. You know, like Right. I, you know, if, by the way, if you go to GNC, which all my products are available in, you can go and buy. Spend every dollar you have investing in this for your health, and buying our stock and everything else. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the, that, that's what the incentive would be at that point, right? I mean, because obviously, Doctor Eyes, he claims, and you'll see, he'll make the claim he has no financial ties to these companies, but that's bogus. Let's oh, you you know, well, we know that's bogus for sure. We see. Uh, so actually, there's actually the, the Senate operate. hearing that Doctor Oz is, was uh, oh, grilled. The Senate hearing. All right, let's take a look. Uh, the growing concern over those false and deceptive ads for weight loss products hit fever pitch on Capitol Hill today and caught in the middle of it all a celebrity TV host named Dr. Oz. You I know wonder well. why. Take a listen to part of the exchange between him and one Senator Claire McCaskill. Dr. Oz, I will have some tough questions for you today about your role, intentional or not, in perpetuating these scams. 
When you feature a pro- Scammer, such a one, huh? Scammer. A product on your show, it creates what has become known as the Oz effect, dramatically boosting sales and driving scam artists to pop up overnight using false and deceptive ads to sell questionable products. While I understand that your message is also focused on basics like healthy eating and exercise, I'm concerned that you are melding medical advice, news, and entertainment in a way that harms consumers. I encourage a nation searching for answers to their health woes. You know what sucks, too, is like every fucking person on Dr. Oz's side who watched that is just like, this fucking bitch. What a bitch. He helped me a lot. <laughs> like, I stopped doing the diet or whatever and got fat again, but that wasn't his fault. The raspberry ketone diet was it the works. thinnest I ever was. The green coffee extract works too. Oh Stop yeah, address weight loss. And I've had it's... soap under my pillow since I was a little girl, so I don't know what this bitch is talking about. <laughs> As you all mentioned, just fine. it affects about two thirds of the population. If the only message I gave was to eat less and move more, which is the most important thing people need to do. We wouldn't be very effectively tackling this complex challenge because viewers know these tips and they still struggle. How come they're both allowed to script their responses? They like, shouldn't be. Like, but. he's, she read a scripted question. He's reading a scripted answer. Like, well, I don't care if the question is scripted. I mean, sure, whatever. But, like, why is his, why does he just have an answer ready that he's reading? Because he got these questions ahead of time. Sure. Of course he knows. That's what I'm saying. Time. Like, shouldn't this motherfucker be put on the spot and have to answer off the cuff? Nah. Whatever. So we search for tools and crutches for short term support so people can jumpstart their programs. We use the alternative solutions often commonly used. Countries, other parts of the world, like in the Ayurvedic tradition in uh, subcontinent of India, or traditional Chinese medicine. So, the traditional Chinese medicine, all yes. none, none of which has any medical merit. By if it did, it would already be folded into Dude. common medical wisdom. So you basically see his response. It's like, look, it's just bullshit. It's like people who are already struggling. They know how to. They know they should be exercising, but they're not doing look, it. Look, so I'm trying to package it in a way that's interesting. Work. Yeah, we're making it interesting for people. It's like. Yeah, it's entertaining, but you know it's it's accurate. But we've just you, you, look. You've been uh, this guy's claims have been evaluated by scientists and medical doctors. I mean, found that over fifty percent of the time he's not telling the truth. Uh, like they said, they they sampled forty episodes, and over half the claims he made were baseless or false or well, are actually contradictory to the best advice available. Like this answer is such bullshit because n like. There are already alternatives to just eating and exercising to help you lose weight. Like, there's psychiatric therapy can help some people deal with some of the underlying issues behind. You know, there's already these alternatives to the two things. So, like, his idea that this there's this dichotomy and that's all they expect him to talk about, that's ridiculous. There are all kinds of little extra things that medicine says that you can do to help with your weight loss. Also, also, it just I, doesn't ex it, does it, it doesn't include a jar of fucking weird devil's toenail pickles or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like it just like it, it, they're actual it, stretches and you know yoga practices it, it, and shit. It doesn't that have been answer to, to the be false beneficial. claims he's made though. It does like no matter all, what what he, what he says here, he never answers the question and say like okay. And, and, it, and I think it's really the most important one is like you basically have lied to your viewers. Repeatedly, see why didn't they hold his face? See, that 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 question was such a softball. Like she's like, I have some very heated questions from you. Now here's a softball, and let me accept this fucking bullshit, ob like totally well, evasive happens. answer many from you. Many of these you. are controversial, as are the supplements that we Does research and profile. Back? I would rather have a conversation of this material on my stage than in back alleys. I don't get why you need to say this stuff because you know it's not true. So why, when you have this amazing megaphone and this amazing ability to communicate, why would you cheapen your show? For money. Money, money, Ch -ch -ch money. I actually do personally believe in the, in the items that I talk about in the show. I, say I that. passionately study them. Uh, I recognize that oftentimes they don't have the scientific muster to present uh, as fact, but nevertheless, I would what? give my audience. That's why, I, that's why I clearly label them magic. Right. That's why I use terms like miracle. They don't meet the the the, the muster of fact, but you believe in them. Yeah, they don't. They don't meet I the muster. Believe. I've something. researched them, and they don't meet the muster of fact. But they're they're good. Yeah, I you believe know, them. Eat a devil's toenail pickle. I bet your back feels better. <laughs> <laughs> I use that at home. Yeah, I eat I eat three or four devil's toenail pickles every day. <laughs> not not a not a spot of back pain. So you tell me. I Too mean, fuzzy. is that scientific? <laughs> Is that evidence? I don't uh, know. Maybe it is. Maybe uh, it is. According to the pixel ma uh, Pickle Manufacturer look, of America, it is. All I'm saying is that people are struggling with this weight loss thing. And look, if I can help somebody with a devil's toenail pickle, 
even though if it doesn't help him actually, then what's the problem with that, Senator? <laughs> <laughs> oh my That's God, pretty much what dude. he said. All right, rock on. What else? <clears throat> uh, then we have, following that is the uh, doctor's call for firing of Dr. Mehmet right, Oz. Let's take a look. Tonight's something oh, you don't hear very often. Anderson, dude. Anderson, dude. Uh, he looks real concerned tonight, too. Look at that furrowed brow. There's no, <laughs> there's no uh, comedy or levity coming out of doctors tonight. calling for one of their own to be fired from his prestige. Oh, I like this, this, uh, this, this ad down High here. High profits, dude. High profits. Oh. Cannabis meets capitalism. Uh, oh yeah. Religious faculty position at an Ivy League medical. Oh, they got like joints rolled like dollar bills too. That's cool. School. The fellow physician they're tar targeting is Dr. Mehmet Oz, popular television host and vice chair of the Who Department of Surgery at Columbia wrong. University's medical school. And Dr. Oz has been criticized in the past over claims he's made and products he's promoted on his show, but this time members of his own profession are leading the charge. Your senior medical correspondent, Elizabeth Cohen. There's nothing ambiguous in the letter 10 doctors wrote about Dr. Mehmet Oz to the dean of Columbia University's medical school. We are surprised and dismayed that Columbia University's College of Physicians and Surgeons would permit Dr. Mehmet Oz to occupy a faculty appointment. He has repeatedly shown disdain for science and for evidence-based medicine. He has manifested an egregious lack of integrity by promoting quack treatments and cures in the interest of personal financial gain. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is slanderous. Yeah. Ten Can you believe they would say that? Ten physicians this, with integrity tell the truth about Dr. Oz, basically. Wait a minute. Remember when he was watching his father cure people as a kid and he knew he just wanted to give people hope? At age hope? seven, dude. And now they're going to say he's all about the give, money? Give people hope. So what if he fucking throws a quack cure out there every now and again? Who hasn't tried a quack cure? You know, quack a lack. I tried some chiropractic. I knew it was quack bullshit. I still tried it. Did it work? No. I gave it a chance, though. Who hasn't done some quack bullshit every now and again? Who hasn't go. been like, you know... Wasabi cures cancer. Whatever. I mean, once I know something that's quacky, I usually try and not waste no, my man, time with it. No, man. You got to try it sometimes. No, nah, not really. Like, what if your dick was rotting off of your body? And uh -huh. Someone's like, rotting? eat some pickled pig's feet and right, cure it I right might. up. You try if it. If my dick's ever you rotting off my body, I might try it. <laughs> Even if you thought there was a glimmer of a chance, Paul, you'd then try I'd, it. So, yeah. you know what? Maybe. And then your dick would fall off, but because it, it's quack bullshit. It'd probably but fall still. off quicker because it'd get infected from that nasty ass pickled dick. You know foot. what? You know what'll happen though? The fucking salt. You know the the brine is really salty, dude. So it'll get on that infection. Maybe it'll fucking stop maybe the infection, so. dude. Or maybe it'll just turn my fucking dick into a useless pickled <laughs> pig's foot yeah, hanging go. down there. Well, Whatever, you know. You never know. Results may vary. <laughs> uh, order now. Wow. So yeah, uh, the medical establishment doesn't like his ass. Is there more to this? Yeah, let's, there's let's more to this. this. Dr. Joel Tepper well, signed the letter. He has touted many drugs as miracle drugs for weight loss. It doesn't even have to be drugs. Sometimes it's just like, you know, here's some raspberry ketones <laughs> or some fucking <laughs> green coffee. Loss, which Extra. causes people to spend huge amounts of money for treatments that have no benefit whatsoever. He said at most universities, uh, if someone... According to you, medical establishment shill. Did this? <laughs> that is grounds for dismissal. Columbia University responded, telling CNN they won't stop faculty members from speaking their minds. In a statement today, Oz said, We provide multiple points of view, including mine, which is offered without conflict of interest. That still doesn't sit well with certain agendas which distort the facts. Yeah, they're distorting the facts. Wow. Yeah. Dude, the, 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 if, if I've ever heard a statement written by a lawyer, that's one of them. <laughs> oh, dude, so now you, now you should move on to uh, Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz defends himself? Yeah. Yeah. So we've heard the criticisms against Dr. Oz. What does he have to say in his defense? So I vow to you right here, right now, we will not be silent. Okay, you know what? I'm sorry, but you know how I said earlier that the snake oil salesman, you know... Uh, this this guy right uh, here, like he's so he's so trustworthy looking. Yeah, like just compare that to this fuck. 
Yeah, he looks... Oh, no, no, no. I mean, this guy, he I want to buy that snake oil. This motherfucker, I don't care what he's selling. I don't want like it. Bullshit, dude. <laughs> Not interested. It looks like Iago played a prank on Jafar and shaved his wizard. <laughs> it does. Off at night. <laughs> like, yeah, have okay. you ever seen a more fucking son of a... Like, <laughs> obvious snake in the grass son of a bitch in all Trust your fucking me. days? Oh, man. We will Surprise. not be silenced. <sighs> okay. How does anyone take... Okay, whatever. We will not give in. A strong that? response from Dr. Mohamed Oz after a 10 physician said that he... Sh was it? Was it a strong response? Let we me hear it again. Silence. We will not give in. All right, I'm going to listen to the whole thing this time without interrupting it. So I vow to you right here, right now, we will not be silenced. We will not give in. A strong response from Dr. Mohamed Oz after a 10... That response tepid, sucked. It's tepid and weak. Boo. That, was not with, that response wasn't strong at all. I will not give in to the people that want us to be factually accurate. Listen, old fat ladies, you love me slinging bullshit, and I'm going to keep slinging bullshit straight from the hip every day for you, okay? I'm going to keep filling your lives with false hope, okay? I will not stop, ever. I will not bow down to these, pe these people that want facts. Physician said that he shouldn't be allowed to continue to teach at Columbia University. He, he joins us live to talk about All his right, so choices and his critics. Good morning to you. Good morning, Lauren. This interview is a joke. Oh, by the way, this interview is a total joke. Uh, let me guess. Softball oh, bullshit. Yes. Well, he's a conservative, and not, look who's doing the interview. Not all good fucking old Fox, good, old, good old Fox affiliate. But well, let's, let's, let's listen to some of it anyway. Well, let's, let's look at the other doctor's well, complaint. Lots. This is... Let's look at this stupid Dr. other doctors Oz, that Isn't it true that the people whatever. speaking against you are Pretty a bunch of stuffy cocksuckers? Of, quote, an egregious lack of integrity, promoting quack treatments and cures in the interest of f personal financial gain. This is all true. And they go on to say that Dr. Oz is guilty of either outrageous conflicts of interest or flawed judgments about what Thank constitutes you know. appropriate medical treatments <laughs> or both. <laughs> I would say both. Both. Yeah. So let's get right to the point. I would say more so the first one though right at the top first of all uh, about the conflicts of interest here have you at any point this, this any, is what gets you really or good. anyone on your television team have you ever been i love how you can hear other people chattering any sort of compensation to promote or push a product on tv no <laughs> Wow. No. What a stunning, <laughs> brazen liar. <laughs> no. Have, have you ever been paid money Dr. by the Brony's product? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Mr. Alphonse Capone, have you ever participated in the illegal transfer of alcoholic beverages? No. <laughs> Mr. Trump, have you ever told a lie since you took office? No. Never. Never. Oh my God. I'm innocent. Uh, all right. Wow. Good stuff, good stuff. We are a television show just like you are, and you have to have commercial sponsors on network television. They're all disclosed. Those are the commercials you see during the <laughs> Mr. show. Mr. Yeah. Hitler, did you preside over the roasting of six million season. Jews? Nine. I did nothing wrong. Penny in return for it. And if I could just explain, I all think... Right, all right, all <laughs> so here's the time out, time out, time out. Okay. So you have sponsors on television. So he just, he just, he basically just played his hand. So yeah. these companies... That the products he promotes on the show, they basically say, we're only going to buy slots if you promote our product. Right. Well, he's saying that only the commercials in the commercial breaks are advertising and that the show has no paid product endorsements whatsoever. Yeah, but, but yeah, that, that's the same thing. That the shows are brought to you by... So they are paid sponsors. That's bullshit. He's lying out of his fucking... Through his fucking teeth. He's a lying sack of shit. He's completely complicit with these other companies. He's definitely getting kickbacks or, or having part ownership of these organizations. He can make or break them. Of course, he's going to profit from that. You think Dr. Oz is like, shucks, I don't know that I have all this power and that people listen to me and buy shit I recommend, but I don't profit from that. Mr. Putin, are you engaged <laughs> in le um, election rigging? Yet. For the misconception that's out there, in this case, by the way, I think there was a, a conflict of interest on the part of the authors, which I'll get to. But I think a lot of folks get those spanned. <laughs> oh, yeah, a conflict of interest on the part of the authors. Sell them weight loss products. 
Uh, you did. You peddled them several fucking times. Yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, you made 16 different claims about miracle weight loss cures, but you're not fucking peddling weight loss claims and, and, and products. I mean, look, Scott. You're stunningly full of shit. You're just lying through your fucking teeth on television right now. You're a fucking lying snake oil salesman. Fuck you. That's bullshit. You just lied. You know what? There is a conflict of interest, though. Because those guys <laughs> that are criticizing him, they have an interest in presenting accurate medical advice. Right. Oh, okay. And he doesn't want to do that. There's clearly a conflict. Well, I guess of I guess you're right. You I guess you're right on that. There front. is definitely like, a conflict. I mean, what did you expect there? was going to happen, though, Scotty? He started this interview with a brazen, bold-faced lie. A one-word brazen, bold-faced lie. No, nah. no, not me. Nope. I did not Zilch, have sex not a, with that not a woman, cent. Miss Lewinsky. I don't make a one penny. Not one penny Depends for me. Depends on what your definition of shill is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's Same see more. on the show not to get suckered by those folks. I wish I'd never mentioned weight loss products because it hijacked the message of the show. Uh, and it's oh, you, many people, you wish I that do really not have a conflict of interest. I'm sure you bought your latest. Yeah, yeah, who really? had a hand you in that? <laughs> no one just came out of nowhere. The ether. Yeah, the fact that you were paid millions of dollars by hey, the these weight loss, weight loss shows industry. do really good. Do more of those. Find more valerian yeah. root for these fat bitches to rub on their fupas. I'm Make sure. It go away. <laughs> you know what, Paul? I'm sure when he's on his fucking yacht in some fucking you know Caribbean locale, where the fuck he goes, or Fuji or fucking Fiji or where the fuck he goes. I'm sure he's real sad that those weight loss companies gave him all that money. Oh yeah, try the fupa be gone route. You know? Yeah, it's like fuck that, dude. Uh, all you have to do, all, dude, we could literally go start a company tomorrow. I bet you the three of us we could just go find some extract from Africa or India or someplace and put, throw a website together and be like secret miracle weight loss. Well, we'd have the to be doctors they, first yeah, to really make the one the scam thing. Work. No, we don't. So we just go on the internet and fucking tell people this is what the medical establishment doesn't want you to know. Right. We need like some kind of like we need to put some one kind of crazy way to lose weight in like a tea or something and be like weight loss herbal tea. Oh yeah, because nobody's ever done that. Drink it every morning. No, dude, we make a pill because it's it's dude, it's no, super concentrated tea. We yeah. gotta stand there out. There hasn't been a suppository got, in a while. Yeah, it's got to be a suppository. For you to really lose weight, you gotta stick it in your. You gotta ass. take a little piece of this root, cut it up, and put it up your butthole. Well, we'll cut them. We'll put. We'll have pre-cut sections of the root. Just sure. Well, that's fair, lovingly fair and gently push it up your rectum. Yep. The more you stuff up there, Watch the, the more weight melt, melt away. The more you lose weight. <laughs> With Paul, uh, Paul suppositories. Yeah, palazzatories. <laughs> palazzatories, dude. <laughs> palazzatories. That's beautiful. Oh shit! What the fuck? So be a weight loss nasal spray too. <coughs> so I felt. Shit hey, your ass. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. Suck it up your nose. It's called cocaine. Yeah. I there you like, go. I feel like we should end exploitation with a uh, thing about Doctor Oz's net worth. Oh, All okay. Right. Let's see. I can Let's pull see. that up. See how sad he is about. Oh yeah, okay. This is his uh, net worth here. So he makes about eight million a year, worth about thirty million total. Cool, good stuff. Remember, he doesn't profit off of his show, though. No, not at I all. I mean, besides his salary, of course. Sure. Yeah, he's not getting kickbacks from all these pharmaceutical companies. There's no way that's happening. There's no way that's happening off the books. No, and Every these time products are a supplement. The, the owners of these products them. that he's shilling on his show aren't approaching his show and getting him to talk about them. No, he's doing in-depth research on valerian pickles and how they'll help you to lose cellulite from the, your inner thighs. It's basically like it, it, it's basically a, an infomercial that's disguised. Basically it's what it is. It's disguised as programming. That's all it really is. It's just he's shilling you shit. There's the auspices that, auspices that you know, you're watching a television show, you're watching a program, and they're covering salacious topics. Thinking that's about, all it is. Thinking about getting LASIK? Well, you might want to think again after today's show, as I'll show you how squeezing a lemon into your eyes might just cure your stigmatism. Oh, Paul, Paul oh, my mouth is already watering. Oh, that psychic? Yeah, I'm a psychic, too. Uh, hey, guess what, Scotty? <laughs> What's that? It's time to score this fuck. Uh, I want to give him, like, at least 40 <coughs> for <coughs> exploitation. I was thinking 30. Well, 30, I mean, come on, dude. All right, 30 is fine, I guess. What do you think, Scotty? Let's split the difference. Thirty-five. You want to go thirty-five? We can go thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-five. Like this, he's just a Oops. total. I fucking... wrote forty-five. Maybe that. Maybe the compute. Maybe I, it was a Freudian thing. Yeah. It's like you I realize know he really you're, you're trying to skim a few points. I told you guys, man. Like, before fuck it. It was pretty. Even... It was pretty fucking bad. I'll give him forty. Whatever. I think that's. I think <laughs> he deserves it. 
No. I mean, that's what I was telling you guys. I'm like, look, Dr. Phil and, and uh, Dr. Drew are pretty fucked up. So is there a greatest achievement? or There is. It's the Dr. Oz show, dude. I the mean, Dr. Oz show itself. I mean, for I mean, look, it's a it's it's been a top daytime television show, and that it's time slot. It's won multiple Emmy awards. I think I have a list of his awards here. Yeah, daytime. I mean, it's actually nominated again in 2018. <coughs> yeah, he's nominated as host. Won a shit ton of daytime Emmys in 2017. Wow, wow. check him out. I mean, it's an award winning show. Viewed by millions of people. Now, the, CBS, Emmy, the daytime Emmys loves Dr. Oz, dude. Every well, year. I used to not care about the Emmys and think that they were just a bunch of fucking self-stroking TV industry bullshit, but um, this has really changed yeah, my is, mind. <laughs> <laughs> they've lauded, <laughs> yeah, they've lauded sure. the Dr. Oz show, the biggest fucking <laughs> venomous viper snake oil salesman that ever fucking graced the planet Earth. And it won last year, dude. And they've just lauded him with all kinds of fucking shit. So the fact that his greatest achievement is basically a forum which to sell snake oil. I don't know. 10, 15. Give another 20, dude. 20? What do you think, Paul? Uh, yeah, 20. Sounds good. Uh, so let's add <coughs> it up. It should be easy because they're all big round numbers there. So, so early life, zero. 10. Zero, 20, 10. So 30, so 30. 70. 70. 90. Wow. 90. He blew everybody out of the water. I mean, doubled up on Dr. Phil. Yeah. Who won, I believe won last episode. Yeah, uh, twice Dr. Phil's number, basically. Um, maybe a little. I think Dr. Phil, yeah, I mean, he, 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 he about doubled it for sure. So, Whew. I mean, this guy is twice the he's bigger piece of shit than Dr. Phil and Dr. Drew combined in terms of being a snake oil peddling huckster. I mean, piece he is, dude. Shit. I mean, you saw oh, easily. the totality and the overwhelming evidence that he is just using this for personal gain and he just denies it, denies it. He goes before the Senate fucking committee and goes, nope, not me. No, nope. he goes on TV and goes, never taken a cent. Listen, people are tired of hearing actual good advice, so we got to fill the time with some fucking bullshit so patrons Doesn't out there in the chat you know what? i wanted to do something nice effect. today i wanted to do a uh i noticed that there's a feature on youtube where you can actually send your super chats to a charity so i thought oh let's do a doctors without borders we're covering a bullshit doctor let's help some real <laughs> doctors but unfortunately they won't let us do it for an unlisted event so that sucks so we weren't able to do that. Too bad but uh i did want to at least involve the chat let me ask you guys if you agree with the score or not you know, he sits at 90. Do you guys think that that's, uh, that's appropriate? Where I think would you fair. put him? I'm pretty sure it was a, it's a fair assessment of his shittiness. Well, we can do, it. We can do the Super Chat thing next episode if it's going to change. Sure. Yeah, we can figure it out. I just thought it'd be cool. I mean, I really wanted to do it this one because we're covering this fucking scam well, doctor piece we'll do of it. shit. We'll do it again, fuck it. We'll just do but, it. You know, um, whatever. It's cool. Well, but I think for our public Monday. episodes, we might want to do some of the charity shit since we don't really push for Super Chats for ourselves anyway. Cool. Yeah, um, let's do it. <clears throat> But uh, reasonable. Most of the audience agrees that it's reasonable. Some of them want to see him over a hundred. Some of them want to see him at an even hundred. Hmm. But um, you know, I think ninety is pretty fair because I feel like he is about twice as bad as Doctor. You know Phil. what? Give him two yeah. more. How about we? How about we just double him up on Doctor Phil? You want to just be? You want him to just be twice a Doctor yeah, Phil? He's a double yeah, Doctor Phil. That'd be what ninety two. Ninety two, man. All right. He got like forty six, didn't he? Somewhere yeah, forty six was Doctor Phil's score. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So there you go. Up. We put him at 92. He's now twice as bad as Dr. Phil, Ugh. which is pretty appropriate to cover for this episode. I mean, he really is our uh, America's modern-day snake oil salesman. Easily. He really is. He typifies it. He, uh, he's, he just is There it. is literally no difference between him and the snake oil salesman of yore, except for he's doing it on a mass he gets to do market it on, level. He, he, yeah, he right. gets to do it on a massive consumer His wagon scale. is a fucking cable TV show yeah, he that could just, beams into every yeah. household in America. Also has uh, over 300,000 YouTube subscribers, so... Branches out on social media as well, so he is a huckster on social media. Oh, That's yeah. great, awesome. So thank you guys for watching. We will see you on Monday with a uh, new episode of uh, Deep Fat Fried. And also uh, for you ten dollars patrons, there's something coming your way uh, this weekend. Uh, it might already even be released. I'm not sure, but it's coming soon, or it might already be out. It's uh, our trip to the crab buffet in um, Mississippi. Mississippi. Delicious. Mississippi. And uh, <laughs> we did some gambling, we did some eating, and we filmed it all, and it's going to be released for your consumption. About an so hour of for watching that. premium content. And we got a bunch of more new content coming your way for the $10 people, behind-the-scenes stuff, like we promised. We deliver on our promises. So thank you guys for watching. 
And uh, yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.